Alex Cooper. If that name doesn't sound familiar to you, you may know her as Call Her Daddy, which is the name of Alex's podcast. And I couldn't wait to turn the tables and ask her some burning questions. Okay, Alex Cooper, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Call Her Daddy is everywhere. I was Josh Safdie's muse when he wrote Uncut Jazz. Right. That was kind of the start of the demise of the marriage. In just two seasons on Spotify, 28-year-old Alex Cooper has the most listened to podcast for women on the platform, charting at number one worldwide. It's so crazy to me. I still don't identify with like the hot blonde girl that I created in the beginning of Call Her Daddy. What is up, Daddy Gang? It is your founding father, Alex Cooper, with Call Her Daddy. What is the meaning behind Call Her Daddy? It's definitely a play off of men run the world, no, we run the world. You're daddy, no, I'm daddy. And so I think it was like a reclaiming for women to be like, you can also be the boss, the king. You can drive your own narrative. Like, yeah, call me daddy. He's like, don't even shave. Like, I want you oh my God. literally off a workout, sweaty. When Call Her Daddy launched four years ago, it had a more salacious vibe. Now the podcast offers more topical newsy issues such as reproductive rights and mental health and is a go-to stop for many young celebrities. As I'm sitting in this chair that all your guests sit in, it's cozy, it's comfortable, I feel relaxed. Is comfort part of your strategy in getting people to open up? I know how I open up is to feel like I'm hanging out with my girlfriend. I want to feel like there's no pressure, there's no one around, let's just chill. Haley Bieber, welcome to Call Her Daddy. The first episode of this current season featured Haley Bieber, who, for the first time, publicly shut down rumors she started seeing now husband Justin Bieber while he was in a relationship with someone else. I can say, period, point blank, I was never with him when he was in a relationship with anybody. That's the end of it. It really was on Haley to like open up and be honest, and I think it was really brave of her. Less than a month after the episode dropped, Haley was photographed for the first time with Selena Gomez, whom Bieber famously dated. I think the whole thing was just really cool because I was happy to help facilitate in any way I could, and I think that's kind of like the special thing of Call Her Daddy. Let's get to know the people and their personalities rather than make snap judgments. Your target demo is millennials, Gen Z. I've actually had a lot of moms reach out to me that they're like, my daughter introduced me to Call Her Daddy. She's like, call her grandma. I'm like, no, you're like a boss, stop. But what I do realize, it's just life, right? Like past generations were not as open as now we have become and it's just a slow progression. I think it's healthy that parents are willing to listen to what their children are interested in and then it creates a conversation. Your dad was a sports producer and gave you your first camera and your mom, I heard you say, and I loved this, that she valued EQ over IQ. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God, mom. But how do you think your parents helped you mold the ability to innovate? They have always been my number one supporters. Like even when people in my extended family were like, has she lost her mind? My parents were like, no, because we know Alex and we know how we raised her and we know her talent. So they listened to every episode. My dad did not listen to everyone. My mom would have the morning coffee and be like, okay, <laughs> don't listen this week. It, and my mom loved it. She was like, I, I know. She, when my mom, like, you go, girl. Oh, she's like, you haven't taught me one new thing. I'm like, mom, <laughs> what? Her parents have a lot to be proud of, including making Spotify history with the biggest exclusive deal for a woman-led podcast. You were oftentimes the only woman in the room. What have you learned about yourself in this past year? It was a moment for me to build confidence when I go to negotiate that next deal. I'm gonna probably be the loudest one in the room. Not because I am trying to overcompensate, because I know what I want. Now to an extraordinary author and poet, Young Pueblo, inspiring millions with his words, myself included. So I was excited to sit down with him and learn more about his journey. If you've ever scrolled on social media, you may have already come across the words of Young Pueblo. Diego Perez is the poet behind the pen name, inspiring readers with wisdom, like realize how short the walk is from gratitude to happiness, and manage your reactions, but do not suppress your emotions. 
Since he first began sharing his words of wisdom in 2014, Young Pueblo has connected with over 2 million followers and has written two New York Times best-selling books of poetry on topics like self-love, growth, and relationships. When you first started posting your writing, what was your intent? I wanted to write about healing being possible. Just hopefully inspire someone else out there who also needed to find a way to heal themselves. Diego and his family emigrated from Ecuador to Boston, Massachusetts when he was four years old. My mom, she worked cleaning houses. My dad worked at a supermarket. So we were really stuck in a poverty trap. And then I think a lot of that tension just got embedded inside of me as well. When I got to college, I could not deal with any tension that was coming up inside of me. I would quickly try to hide it with, with um, drugs, with smoking, with uh, going to more parties. What was the breaking point for you? It was right after college. This time I pushed my body to the edge and I took, you know, um, an assortment of different drugs. I felt like my heart was gonna explode. I ended up talking to a doctor after that episode and she told me it's a, what I described to her sounded like a mild heart attack. How has being first generation American affect your overall outlook of life, especially in that point? The first thought is my parents. I saw the immense sacrifice that they made to just give us the chance at a better opportunity. I felt like I was giving all of that up by just filling myself with more and more pleasure just so that I could run away from my pain. I knew that the only way out was to start telling myself the truth. In 2011, Diego started taking small steps toward building positive habits. These improvements eventually led him to daily meditation. So the meditation has given me a way to process these like really tough emotions. And when something challenging happens, I notice that I can feel my reaction, but it's not as overwhelming as it used to be. And meditation gave you the clarity and creativity to write and share. Definitely. I mean, I was never creative before meditating, you know, and I, I didn't go into meditating to become more creative. When the mind becomes lighter and it's not as burdened by past hurt that you carry, um, this creativity bubbles up. Diego's poems have been liked and shared thousands of times. And in his newest book titled Lighter, Diego shares his own journey and advice on how to achieve personal transformation. What do you hope is the biggest takeaway for people who come to you and look to your words? I hope they take away inspiration. It's really possible to transform your life. It's really possible to sort of take that big leap forward in your own evolution. Up next, a Wall Street trailblazer empowering women to take control of their money. Right after this. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Welcome back to Up Next, where we introduce you to folks doing extraordinary things and inspiring others. Lauren Simmons did something in her 20s not many people thought was possible. And now she's an entrepreneur and money expert on a mission. 
Biggest question to ask yourself when setting financial goals. What is your long-term goal? What does your future look like? For 27-year-old Lauren Simmons, her future is looking bright. As a podcast host, author, and entrepreneur, Lauren is a rising star in the finance world. After graduating from Kennesaw State University in 2016, Lauren moved to New York City, where she landed a job as a stock trader. And at just 22 years old, she became the youngest person and only the second black woman in the New York Stock Exchange's 230-year history. Did you realize that you were breaking barriers? Absolutely not. I just wanted to make my mom happy. And when I passed the exam, which, mind you, the men on the floor were openly taking bets against me before the exams. Did you know that was happening? Yes. I let my work speak for itself. The day that I passed the exam, Richard Rosenblatt, at the time CEO and founder of Rosenblatt Securities, came downstairs and we get this badge. He was ringing the bell that day. He's like, we gotta get Lauren a badge. She has to come on stage with me. I was the youngest member and he was the oldest member. It was such a beautiful moment. What was it like being a wolfette <laughs> among the wolves of Wall Street? Once I passed the exam and I proved myself, the men on the floor gave me the same respect as, as, as the other men. I got to change people's opinions and and I feel like that has a far bigger impact than it would if I was in a space that was a little bit more diverse. 29. Yes. Since leaving Wall Street in 2019, Lauren is expanding the money conversation and making it more accessible for young people and women with projects like her podcast, Money Moves. Why do you want to make financial literacy so available to everyone, but specifically to younger people? I think the early that we can be transparent about salaries, credit, um, money, what we want financially in relationships, the more empowered we can be in the long run for our future. What would you tell young Lauren? What would I tell her? Oh my goodness, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I, you know, would tell her everything happens for a reason and it's going to work out just fine. Okay, let's get cozy on the couch and get out of my comfort zone, talk some finances. Yay, okay. I'm excited. <laughs> to talk about finance. I'm going to ask you some quick spitfire financial <laughs> questions. Okay. Best tip to save? Budgeting. Can you tell me about the 50-30-20 budget rule, by the way? Yeah, so 50% goes to your expenses after taxes, because okay. people seem to forget that. 30% goes to your future, 20% goes to your wants. And what is the best way to budget? Understanding where your money is going and not being afraid to check your bank account. That is sometimes scary. Very scary, you gotta get out of that. <laughs> Most important argument to have when negotiating a raise understand what it is that you want and what you're willing to compromise on. And realizing that negotiating a salary is not all about money. It can be time off. There are so many other different options. And should you always be over negotiating? Yes. Okay. Let them knock you down. Don't under. <laughs> I feel like, honestly, I feel like a little weight is lifted off my shoulder. Like I should be able to take better control of my finances and what I want. Not you should, you will. I will. I will. You will. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. From Wall Street to whiskey, of course. In less than two years, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey has sold an impressive one million cases. And I caught up with the company's co-founder, Steve Yang, to learn more. Hit me with the screwball. <laughs> Cheers. A shot of whiskey is usually the sign of a good time. But for Stephen Yang and his family, this drink represents so much more. Nowhere else in the in any other country would be a Cambodian refugee, a mom with a chemistry background and a law degree, create a peanut butter whiskey and became the most successful launch super premium liquor in history. We are ultimately the American dream. Stephen is the co-founder of the popular Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey and his story of success began more than 8,000 miles from his home in San Diego to a childhood marked by tragedy in Cambodia. There was a whole genocide that happened from 74 to 79. I caught polio when I was one years old. And so my parents decided to drop everything and decide to leave Cambodia and go into a refugee camp. And that 
journey was extremely difficult. My mom was pregnant with my little brother at the time when we were crossing the landmine borders. The Yang family endured the dangerous journey and sought safety in a refugee camp in Thailand where they stayed for six years. You describe your parents as being so optimistic, but the most optimistic person in that situation, I'm sure, feels beaten down. What kept you going? A parent's love for their child. They truly believe they could get me medical help. And what was your physical state like at this time? After a couple years or so, I, I couldn't walk anymore because my leg, uh, my muscle didn't develop anymore. And so how I really get by is just two sandals on my feet and two sandals on my hand and just crawl. Wow. <laughs> That's really tough. In 1992, the Yang's hopes were answered when they got sponsored to move to California, where Stephen was able to receive the medical care he needed. We were all skin and bone, didn't speak any English. We would always get basket food all the time, and it would be some fruits, bread, and then peanut butter. That was my first basket I ever had, was peanut butter. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? So <laughs> for me, peanut butter was a taste of freedom. Fast forward to 2006, Stephen opened OB Noodle House with his brothers Scott and Kyle. There, he let his love for peanut butter run wild. I put peanut butter in everything. Peanut butter in wings, and fried rice, and then I started putting peanut butter with Jameson. That tastes like peanut butter. We turned that into screwball peanut butter whiskey. His wife, Brittany, figured out how to make it work. She's the brain in all this. She's able to use her chemistry background to formulate the brand and also really create everything from the bottle and just look at all the contracts. Without my wife, there would be no screwball. The brand struggled to find bottlers, distributors, and investors. Ultimately, Stephen and Brittany financed the company themselves. How did you continuously believe in yourself when there were so many external factors that were consistently breaking you down? How we believe in is what my parents taught us also. We now have a child. We're thinking of setting a better future for our daughter. So that was the strength that got us going. Since we launched, we we're the fastest to a million flat cases for a premium brand. America right. loves a good drink. <laughs> yes, God bless America. Since its launch in 2018, the drink has exploded in popularity, even gaining celebrity fans like Questlove and Dave Grohl. And with its success, Stephen is committed to giving back. I was on the opposite side, and now it's just coming back full circle. Most recently, providing aid for Ukrainian refugees in Poland and donating $100,000 to orphanage renovations all part of the brand's mission to spread kindness to those in need. I believe we could achieve progress by working together. Take this single chopstick right here. When you're single, it's easily broken. But if we come together and work together, we reinforce and support each other. We will thrive if we work together. An incredible story of resilience. Coming up next, two of fashion's rising stars. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. If you love high fashion and red carpet style, like myself, we can pretty much guarantee some of the looks you've seen over the past decade were curated by Law Roach. Law is the force behind so many well-dressed celebrities, including one of my favorite style stars, Zendaya. And he told me his passion for fashion started at an early age. Take a look. I remember vividly watching her whole everything change. The persona, the walk, the way she held her head high. La Roach's appreciation for the impact style has on women started decades ago with his grandmother back in Chicago. Growing up, you'd watch her get ready for church mm -hmm. and sort of see her have a little pep in her step mm -hmm. just, just by dressing a way that she felt good in. That memory is so important to me. Like, I still feel the way she changed. And every time I'm able to get that from one of my clients, it's like a drug to me, honestly. It's, it, it fuels me. Looking to your left, please. Zendaya! And Zendaya looking down. Turn to your left, show us the front. These days, when you see Zendaya, Venus Williams, Kerry Washington, or Celine Dion, you're likely also seeing the influence of La Roche. His job is to carefully craft the visual image of his clients and his career is exploding as a result. Law's work was featured on 32 covers last year alone. He was just named West Coast editor of British Vogue, and he recently styled Zendaya for the cover of Time's 100 Most Influential, a portfolio so massive he trademarked his own title. You prefer mm -hmm. the term image architect mm -hmm. to stylist. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? I was starting to think about what it is that I really did. I do all this research and I look at everything these, this, these, this person has ever worn and see the things I really like and things I don't like so much. And so I take all that data and I, I kind of build a blueprint. And when I started to think of it that way, it was really, really similar to what an architect does. But his impact goes far beyond fashion, famously working with Celine Dion after the passing of her husband. Celine saying, he brought me out of my closet and now flowers are growing. I really care. I love what I do. I just really want to add value to, to any situation that I'm in. That does bring me to Zendaya because mm -hmm. when I look at her, truthfully, I think she can look good in anything. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to make her feel her best? The reason that she can look good in anything because she believes that she can look good in anything. When I first started working with her, 13 going on 14, we had our first look. This skirt and this blazer, it was just so cute, right? <laughs> we thought it was so cute. And right before she was about to walk out the door, she looked at me with, with uncertainty. And she said, what if, what if people don't like it? And I literally just grabbed her, I grabbed her hands, and I looked in her eyes, I said, who cares? And at that moment, I saw this switch. And, and literally, we have never had a conversation since that day about what somebody else would think about it. Operating off that who cares philosophy, Law has built a global enterprise, making him the most successful in the world at his craft. One of my platforms is to normalize success in my community. We're um, taught that you're successful if you're a basketball player or you're successful if you're a rapper. I've been able to build a global business by literally at the core of it, picking out pretty dresses for pretty girls. I love it because I get, I get now to be an inspiration to other people who look like me. La Roach isn't sure exactly what's next in his career, but he knows it will be major. I'm moving into more collaborations. I like to do things to, to prove to myself that I can do it. Taking what he learned at his grandmother's home to create an impact on A-list style across the globe. All these great people, iconic people that I work with, 
I want to be a part of their legacy. Like, I want to be a part of their story, even if it's the tiniest, tiniest part. There's more to come right after this. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the latest like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. We end with a woman who's been described as a visionary in fashion and culture. Lindsay Peoples has accomplished so much at a young age, and she's not stopping anytime soon. At only 31 years old, Lindsay Peoples is creating waves in publishing. She's already received high praise, made history at Teen Vogue as the youngest editor-in-chief at Condé Nast, and now editor-in-chief at New York Magazine's The Cut. And she's advocating for change. You are living main character rom-com energy. <laughs> Do you remember what parts of magazines you were drawn to when you were a kid? It was just the storytelling. It was never just about the clothes. It was like how they weaved in the right photographer and the right story and bringing about the right tone and all of the things that just made it come together. I just remember feeling like it was a different world and I wanted to explore it. Lindsay started exploring with an internship at Teen Vogue in 2011. But her inspiration started much earlier than that. How did the women in your life shape your passions? I've just been so blessed to have an amazing family, women that really loved on me and encouraged me. I talk about my, my grandmother a lot because she was somebody specifically that really helped me figure out what I loved so much about fashion and she was dressed to the nines after work. The stockings, the dress, the shoes, the gloves. She walked with her head held high, no matter what. This solid support system helped lead Lindsay to early success. A few days shy of her 28th birthday, she landed the editor-in-chief job at Teen Vogue. You don't always want to have to make history, but you do. Mm -hmm. When you entered this industry, was that a mission of yours to make it count in a big way? I was tired of the same stories being told. I was tired of the same people, you know, styling shoots and it not being inclusive. And so I felt like if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it differently. Doing it differently led her to a second editor-in-chief position at New York Magazine's The Cut, which averages over 10 million monthly unique readers. Shooting Naomi Campbell for our first fashion cover, I was just like, this is my first fashion cover. I really want to shoot somebody amazing and just come out with a bang. What is your hope for your readers. Anything that I can do to make it more inclusive, whether it be industry at large or in this job, I'll do. We just call these mood boards. All the images we make affect culture and beauty standards and all of that. And so it's really important to be able to show people different body types and sexualities and, and hair and, and identities overall. And to see different people like Tracy growing up, it you know, meant so much to me. What's advice that you receive from other generations that you really put to use? There's a line in an Oprah book that I love that says you cannot defeat someone who knows who they are and I feel like a lot of it for me has been just knowing that there are certain things that I need to do to move the industry forward. Mm -hmm. I honestly never thought I would be an editor-in-chief so I feel really grateful that I've been able to do this twice. I want to be a ladder. I want to help people up and I want it to be a little bit easier for the next generation of, of women of color for sure. 
That's it for my series. Up next, for more inspiring stories, watch Today with Hoda and Jenna right here on Today All Day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new Pop Star Plus coming up on today's show with the Golden Globes just a week away. We're going to revisit a conversation where the stars will be getting a lot of buzz. That is Austin Butler for playing Elvis. Plus, we're going to share Mean Girls star Jonathan Bennett's favorite things to watch with you. And then we're going to be honoring the legendary Diane Keaton just ahead of her birthday. That's all to come. But first, here's today's Pop Star. We're going to start with Elvis. It's been a big year for the King, thanks to Austin Butler's Golden Globe-nominated performance in Bo Boz Lerman's biopic. Here's a little bit of that if you missed it. See, there's acting like somebody who was a real person in history, and then right. there's there's like becoming, becoming that person. That's a good point. And that's what Awesome yeah. uh, did in that role. Incredible. Yeah. By the way, this weekend, the Elvis movie celebrating what would have been the King's 88th birthday by offering free screenings all across the U.S. and Canada. Ten cities will host the showings on Sunday. If you can't make it to the theater, you can catch the behind-the-scenes special. It streams on HBO Max. It's called Just a Boy from Tupelo. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Graceland, as you can imagine, will be packed this weekend. They've got a bunch of festivities, too. Uh, Presley's family's home set to host four days of celebrations, including including a new exhibition and an appearance by Lisa Marie. Next up, the Grammys. What do these two tracks by Harry Styles and Doja Cat have in common? Okay. Oh, it's not the same. Craig was more familiar with, yeah, the, like <laughs> with the former number as opposed to the latter. But there was As It Was and Woman, both those songs nominated for Record of the Year at the Grammys. Oh. If either of those songs win, it'll be the shortest track time-wise to take home the trophy more than five decades. Doja, Doja's track comes in at two minutes and 52 seconds. Okay. Wow. And Harry's is even shorter than that. Well, give me some perspective here. What's normal? Well, I have 340. Okay. Wow. Maybe, maybe more. Well, that's probably songs. the average, though. It's a lot shorter. I feel like older songs used to be What long. is? Like older songs used to be a lot shorter. Well, Fifth Dimension in 1967 was the shortest track to ever win Record of the Year of the Grammys. Okay. I don't know the time length, but Up, Up, and Away was the name of the track. You amaze me with your knowledge. No, that was written in. I can't take credit. Oh, for that. I thought you just like. Yeah. The fact that we had that graphic right there means oh. I, didn't, I didn't come from the dome. I was with just that staring one. at you, so I was like, wow. Although they were called the Versatiles in 1965. See, you knew I, that. I, I didn't know that. You knew that. Next up, our buddy Martha Stewart, the food and lifestyle experts offering some tips for folks participating in something called Dry January. Never heard of it. In a hilarious new ad for Tito's, Stewart shows off the many ways that you can use a bottle of vodka for pretty much anything other than drinking. If you've got Tito's lying around, don't just stare at it. Use it. Say goodbye to musty smells. Add it to your pasta sauce for a little extra kick. And maybe a little bit more. Spice up your Friday night by cutting through dirt and grime. And nothing tenderizes your favorite meat like Cheetos. <laughs> That's funny. It's like an SNL sketch. That's good. It is cute. What's even we have a, th a theme for Martha's next segment here. <laughs> What's even more ironic is you remember a few weeks ago when she came and she, she made that eggnog. Egg oh, my gosh. Nothing that had everything but vodka yeah, in right. it. Right. Right. That was, right. The, that was the Long Island iced tea of Oof. eggnog. It had everything. <laughs> Uh, and if you don't like uh, dry January, try just a nice damp January. Damp January. Damp January. Damp January. What exactly is damp January? Just less than dry. Uh, <laughs> finally, New Year, New Year. Check out these pictures here. We're going to start 2023 off with some people trying to hit their fitness goals. Okay. How about Shea Mooney wow. of the band Dan and Shea, the country guy, kicking off the New Year. Is star there. There's a side by side. 50 pound weight loss. Wow. And he wrote in the caption, yes. I changed my entire world in six months. If that tired guy on the left can do it, so can you. Wow. Shea, you're my superhero, man. Mm. That is so inspiring. Not everybody is having the easiest time getting into shape. Take a look at Blake Lively's hilarious side by side. The actress poses alongside trainer <laughs> Don Saladino, joking in the caption. Been doing Don Saladino's workout program for months. Now, something isn't working. Like, of course, poking fun at that baby bump. She and Ryan Reynolds expecting baby number four. And now to the reason we call the show Pop Star Plus. A few more headlines for you. We're going to start with Maren Morris, the Grammy winner, celebrating 10 years since since she moved to Nashville. In a recent post, Marin shared a snapshot from the day that she left 
for the country music city writing. I packed up a U-Haul with a dream and a healthy dose of delusion, moved into a Craigslist place with two room roommates that I didn't know and hustled to get into any writing room I could. The rest, as they say, is history. It was fun to see that other A-list music friends of hers hopped in the comment section to share some words. Kristen Chenoweth wrote, I feel the same way about New York City 20 years ago. You got the right outlook, girl. Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife, wrote, Courage, faith, hard work, you did it all. Can't wait to see what happens in the next 10 years in Nashville for Marin Morris. And finally, Quinta Brunson. Last night, the Abbott Elementary star stopped by The Late Show and taught Stephen Colbert some Philadelphia slang. And if you're not from the city of brotherly love, these might surprise you. What is John? John is a person, place, thing, or idea. Uh, someone call it a noun. <laughs> the only, the Use only... it in a sentence. Yo, this John crazy. <laughs> this one is that a breaks computer? my brain. No, a Mac machine is the same thing as an ATM. Bull. Bull is a, a guy. Am I bull? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she looks exhausted teaching Steve in the slang there. You learn something new every day. How does a Mac machine just have nothing to do with mac and cheese? I, I don't know how that's possible. Coming up next, Austin Butler on his Golden Globe nomination uh, on the portrayal of Elvis ahead of Hollywood's biggest party of the year, the Golden Globes. We're going to revisit how he got into character. Stick around for that. Coming up. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. Popstar Plus here. Austin Butler took on the role of music icon Elvis, earning himself a much-deserved Golden Globe nomination for that portrayal. The film telling the story of Elvis's career, but through the eyes of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks, also nominated for Best Picture. So Austin stopped by Hoda and Jenna's show to talk about his acting process. Take a look. Okay, we're thrilled mm -hmm. to have the king himself in the building, Austin Butler. And it wasn't easy stepping into Elvis Presley's blue suede shoes. In fact, it kept Austin up at night mm -hmm. for two years, but he's been getting incredible rave reviews, yes. including from us, <laughs> uh, his performance in the buzzy biopic. So let's take a little sneak peek of Austin as Elvis Presley. You're looking for trouble? You came to the right place. You're looking for trouble? Look right in my face. I was born standing up and talking back. My daddy was a green eye. He bore my little wheels misery. Oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, wow. Secondly, watching you physically transform yourself yes. into Elvis Presley was astonishing to us. How did you, how did you get there? It, I, thankfully, I had a year and a half before we started shooting, so I tried everything. You know, I had an incredible movement coach named Polly Bennett who helped me so much, and 
I had a six months period where the film shut down for COVID, where at that point I'd had this year of doing everything, you know, trying everything, watching everything, reading every book on his life. Uh, but then that six months was really where it all marinated. Yeah. You, I feel like you're, you know. you're still Elvis right now. Yeah. <laughs> are you? Are you? It's hard, is it, is it hard to you, shake him? Oh, you know, I, I think there's there's habitual things. When you do one thing for two years, yeah, yeah, you create habits. So yeah. I know that I've got habits that are in there, but yeah. it's not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> the, other th the other thing that is just incredible, and this is what um, Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. the Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. said yeah. about you, is that you didn't phone one thing in. Yeah. And, and that's oh, why we wow. said you didn't sleep for two years. It was yeah. a lot. It was rigorous. But yeah. did it feel in the moment like, was it joyful? Did you feel like this is mm -hmm. something I meant to yeah. do? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was the most joyful thing I've, I've ever been a part of. I mean, it was, it was also the most challenging yeah. thing I've ever mm -hmm. done. But what a privilege to get hmm. to live with Elvis and learn everything about him for two years. And, 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 I mean, it was just the best time of my life. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because Priscilla Presley yes. obviously gave this a big kiss for many, oh, many, yes. many reasons. But I was just thinking about the pressure, not just because there are millions of Elvis fans, but Priscilla herself, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, you know, keeping her eye on this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was the thing that, that really would wake me up every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was waking up around 3 in the morning, <laughs> even if I went to bed at 1, you know, yeah. just because I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up, my heart was pounding. And it was this thing of knowing that, you know, it's, you want to do justice to any human being yeah. that you ever play but with him yeah. you know his family yes. and also all the misunderstandings yes. about yes. his life yes. and his life's been so pulled out of context and so I just for Lisa Marie and, and Priscilla uh -huh. and their entire family uh -huh. uh, so I just feel I mean and they've just been so I loved warm it. To yeah. me. I loved I looking was, at the pictures of you with his yeah. granddaughter oh and Riley God. who's Riley's an incredible musician she's amazing yeah. Yeah. I mean and let's talk about the music oh because my gosh. first of all we all have our favorite Elvis song mm -hmm. yeah. as you said he's an icon you are told okay you're gonna sing yeah like, are, this is your voice this is singing. you yeah, singing yeah. what like what were you like okay or were you scared was that part of the waking up I was the yeah because I, I wasn't a, a singer I'm a really shy person as well Oh, that's during a test. Are you still that we did. shy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I still am. I mean, yeah. I have ways that I deal with it now, but I, my my resting state is shy and introverted, <laughs> yeah. and then I kind of have to figure out my way of going to the world. But um, yeah, that that was during an early test, but. I, it was just a thing where I just became obsessed with it. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to sing as much I, of it I'm as I could. I'm so fascinated about the shy piece because I know a lot of parents are watching their kids yeah. maybe are shy and they're mm. wondering, like, so how do you get up the nerve and all those things to get up and, and do a beautiful scene like the one we showed? I think it's, it's about where you end up channeling your energy. Oh. So often shyness for me came from, you know, fear or uh, insecurity, but often it's like uh, the energy feels like it's coming back in yeah, on yourself. Yeah. You yes. become self-conscious. Yeah. And so for me, it was always, and early on in acting class, that's what helped me because I realized it's about putting your attention on someone the else. The other person. And so you ah. can't be other conscious and self-conscious at the same time. Oh, wow. That's so smart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. That that's we really need to like good. put a, on a pillow. I mean, <laughs> the, the dancing yeah. too, we talked a little bit, but like the movements. You had to really feel it. This it wasn't, wasn't like choreographed. Yeah, because yeah, Elvis was never choreographed. Right. It was all about the music moving him. So for me, I had to touch into those things, like going to a gospel church in Nashville mm -hmm. where 30 of the most incredible gospel singers are singing for eight hours straight and we're stomping our feet. Wow. You start feeling your soul stirring you to wow. move. And so I then knew anytime I wasn't feeling that, I was off. Yeah. So it was always touching back into that. But you're, you got to be incredibly meticulous and specific to get... You know, I mean, that, his things, I mean but, that's yeah. amazing. What, uh, one thing that you and Elvis have yeah. in common, mm -hmm. a heartbreaking thing, is mm -hmm. you both mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. your mothers at 23. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did How did that inspire you to, to get into this role? Well, it was, it's that thing where when you first look at Elvis, he, he feels so much larger than life. Mm -hmm. And you look at him like a godlike figure or the mm -hmm. caricature of Elvis. and. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I fell into that when I, the first month where I was trying yeah. to work on mm -hmm. it, where I taped myself and I watched it back and I just, I saw an impersonation and I, mm -hmm. so I couldn't send it to Baz and, um, but it was when I learned about his, his mm -hmm. mom and then knowing that it, we were the exact same yes. age and that just hit mm -hmm. me, like it was one of those things where you feel like the stars are aligning and, 
Uh, and so, yeah, that, that just became the most personal thing. Well, that, that, there was a scene that we're not giving anything away, but you are actually, your character Elvis is in his mother's closet. Yeah. Yeah. He's basically, he can't let go of her. Yes. And it was in that moment, yeah. too, I watched and yes. I said, either this guy is either the best actor on earth or he's felt something before, mm -hmm. just like that. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. Yeah, no, we don't want we you to go. We don't. What's See? next? <laughs> How, like, how do you go from yeah. this? Has it been hard to move on? Yeah, you, you get. I got done. I didn't quite know what to do with mm -hmm. myself. You know, you, I was two years of that was my mm -hmm. whole life, and uh, I got done, and I needed to kind of remember mm -hmm. who I was at the end. So I, yeah. I got into pottery in London. I oh, loved yeah. that. You oh, know, that's I, cool. I had the wheel. It was my whole ghost <laughs> moment. I had a lot of that kind of thing, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's awesome. like... Well, a, we are so happy yeah. for you. We're so oh, happy we got you. to witness this thank moment in your so life. Yeah. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We're back here on Popstar Plus. You might know him best as Aaron Samuels in the hit comedy Mean Girls, or maybe you caught his Hallmark holiday movie. We're talking about Jonathan Bennett, who was kind enough to chat with our Donna Farrison about uh, everything that he watches for our What I Watch series. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Okay, I'm going to ask you some quick questions about what you're watching right now. Great. Okay. What do you watch when you need a good laugh? The Holiday Center on Hallmark Channel. <laughs> Jason DeVito, your family's neighbor. Oh, hi, Sam Dalton, the brother, which you obviously already know, obviously. I've said obviously twice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you watch when you need a good cry? The Notebook. Me too. Every would time. Also, would also love to see you with Rachel McAdams again. I mean, why do you wear your hair like that? Your hair looks so sexy pushback. Katie, will you please tell him his hair looks sexy pushback? I, I would, I will, I would be Rachel McAdams PA at this point. Like anything just be around her. Like, sure, great. Give me a coffee. Yeah, no problem. Like, whatever you need. <laughs> That's good. What do you watch that reminds you of your childhood? Planes, trains, and automobiles. And Christmas Vacation. Because I grew up watching Christmas Vacation is my number one movie. So Christmas Vacation. What do you watch that may surprise people? Murder documentaries. I watch murder documentaries every single night to fall asleep. <laughs> what? Because my my therapist says it's because for someone with that's riddled with anxiety like yeah. I am, knowing how the story's gonna end gives me a peace of mind because I know how they end. Okay, that makes so much sense. Thank you right? for 
clarifying that because I know a lot of people who actually do that and I never really understood. It's the soothing tone of the narrator and then you know at the end someone's going to die. That's just how it is. So like, yeah. you know the outcome, so there's no anxiety. That's how I feel though when I watch Hallmark Christmas movies. Like it soothes my anxiety because I know that go. love will end up happening in the end. Yep. Um, what do you watch when you need comfort food? Oh, Great British Bake Off. Mm, yes. It always makes me hungry though. Is it's idea. so good. What do you watch when you can't fall asleep? Oh, Family Guy. Mm. But not the what? episodes with explosions. Yeah. <laughs> good call. What do you watch for the theme song? I know my answer to this. Family Guy. Have you seen The White Lotus though? Yes. Don't you love that theme song? I do love the theme song. I've only seen the first up season. I started the second season and it wasn't like grabbing me. The okay, yet, okay. So I had to like, everyone's like, you have to get past the first episode. Like the first season I watched it. I was like, what is going on? I'm hooked. What is this? But the second season, we already kind of know what's going on. So you're like, now it's not like a mystery. So I want to like, I need to get past the first episode and really get I'm pulled I'm telling in. you, it gets better. And yeah. if for nothing else, just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Okay, and finally, uh, what do you watch right now that you're currently obsessed with? Enola Holmes, I just watched the movie. I like that a lot. I agree, I love that too. Millie Bobby Brown did a great job. Um, yes. Jonathan Bennett, thank you so much. And congratulations <laughs> on your success with The Holiday Sitter. I know it's going to be a huge hit and you are making so much change and love and it's all good. Thank you so much. Great to hear from Jonathan. Coming up, the legendary Diane Keaton. We have a clip we've dug up from our vault and we'll play it for you right after this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Popstar Plus, the 2003 film Something's Gotta Give portrayed a couple played by Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton who found love much later in life. Well, this weekend, Diane Keaton's gonna mark her 77th year around the sun. And in her honor, we wanted to share this clip where she stopped by the Today Show to talk about that role, one that she says was pure heaven to play. You are in this movie. I am in the movie. Nancy Myers, who yeah. you collaborated with yeah. in Baby Boom mm -hmm. and Father of the Bride, wrote this. And you, neither you nor she, ever thought a movie like this would really be made, did you? Well, I certainly didn't. I think Nancy did because she actually wrote it and spent all that time thinking about it. But to me, it was just like, uh, yeah, uh, you sure, Nancy? This is where you want to go. And uh, yeah, she did it, though. And, but it, and it exists, and it's it's fabulous. It's very unusual, though, and of course, it's this totally is what unusual. everybody has been glomming on to, the yeah. notion of a mature relationship. Mature, that's Being portrayed, me. yeah, I love that word, <laughs> mature. I'm a mature woman. <laughs> Being portrayed on the big screen in Hollywood yeah. without, you, you know, young, nubile things. But by the way, let me just say for the record, 
You look fantastic. Oh, I love you. Thank you for saying that. But you look fantastic. Oh uh, well, it's just it's just the mutual <laughs> admiration society. But no, really. And and what do you make of the whole thing that people are making a huge deal of the fact that these are two older mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. having sex, falling yeah, in love, yeah. um, as lead characters in a mm -hmm, big movie? Mm -hmm. um, were you like, yeah, finally? Yeah, I mean, of course I was. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's the best of all possible worlds because, I mean, I'm, not only do I get to kiss Keanu and have a big romance with him, but I also get to have the same experience with Jack, and he's, the, you know, the original bad boy, and that's about as exciting as it gets. So, I mean, what's bad for, for me? As far as I'm concerned, it was just thrilling. And also, you're protected by the words. You know how it is. Like, Nancy's words are so beautiful, and it's so much fun to, you're safe, you're safe because in real life, as you know, when you fall in love, it's more precarious and frightening, but this was just like pure heaven to play. I mean, I think this is the dream of all actresses at any age in your life, is to play someone who, who falls in love and falls so deeply for the first time in her life. And I think it's really unusual that a woman age, you know, 55, for the first time in her life, falls in love. Well, let's I mean, talk about her, because I love yeah. the character, because she's... First of all, she's accomplished. Yeah. She's hugely intelligent. Yeah. But she's also as tightly wound as a drum. And, 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 right? <laughs> she's I a mean, little bit of a control freak. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it must have been such a meaty role to sink your teeth in because she's so cool on so many levels, right? Yeah, absolutely. She's a, well, explain who she is. Her name's Erica Berry. Erica Jane Berry, and she's this, and she's sort of the female equivalent of Neil Simon, right? I mean, that's how successful she is. And she has, of course, the fabulous house in the Hamptons and the most gorgeous daughter anybody could ever want, played beautifully by Amanda Peet. To older women everywhere. Mm -hmm. Keanu Reeves, who plays an emergency room doctor, considerably how about younger how great he is. Yeah, than you, falls in love with, with you. With me, I know, go figure. Uh, love that. All right, we're going to look at a scene of uh, where you're picked up yeah. for a date mm -hmm. by Keanu Reeves, yeah. and guess who answers the door? Mm hmm. Look who's answering the door. And look who's at the door. I brought you something. A heart-healthy dinner from our cafeteria. Why, thank you. Hello. You look beautiful. Thank you. I like the music behind it. You look hot. All right, so how much fun was it to work with Jack Nicholson? And can you please ask him if he'll do an interview with me? He is such... Yeah, what's the matter with him? What is the matter with him? Tell him know. he needs to sell this movie. No, I mean, he's the king. He's the king of talk. Did you, you have know. a great time, though? Of is course I had funny? a great time. I had the most fun with him, though, for the two weeks that we were sort of stuck in bed together, semi-naked. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really got to know a lot about Jack's love life. Which is really interesting. <laughs> well, this is a say. family show, okay? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm what you're referring clear. to. But you're you know, scaring me. He's a big Irish guy, you know. He's a big sentimental slob, and he's a real <laughs> fool for love. I mean, oh, he's a say sucker. The see? Thing. But it's true. He really is. Well, the movie is something. Got it. Something's oh, got to give. Are they going to play that song at some point in the movie? Why by not? The way? And we're wishing a very happy early birthday to you. Miss Keaton. All right, folks, that's another great pop start plus in the can. Tomorrow we've got more on the Golden Globes and some nominees to keep your eye on. Have a great day. See you soon.
I love the city of Baltimore. I've been coming here for years. And if there's one thing I know, the city of Baltimore is serious about his crab. I love Baltimore crabs. This is the, the, the stomping ground of crabs. And I've been eating crabs since the time I could sit up at a table. It's a little spicy, salty, and savory, all in one. If I could describe the taste, you can't. You just have to try it. <laughs> you just have to try it. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. When you think Maryland, you got to think Blue Crab, an essential part of the state's culture and cuisine. And no place knows how to cook it up quite like Baltimore. I mean, just as many ways as you can count, you can find ways to eat crab. Of course, there's your basic, your, your steamed crab with the beautiful spices, and you just start whacking that bad boy. You can get all that beautiful meat out. You can get cra canned crab if you'd like. Uh, of course, there's also the fabulous crab mac and cheese with a hot dog. There's the crab dip, there's your crab soup, and of course, the king of crab, the crab cake. Yes, but this is a cake that needs no icing. Crab cakes have been enjoyed by many for centuries throughout the Chesapeake region. But here in Baltimore, they're a way of life. And one of the city's most popular go-tos is tucked away just inside the world-famous Lexington Market. We're headed back to Houston today and we wanted to have the best crab cake in town. We're from Atlanta, glad to be here. People have been coming to Fabies for years. Yes. Ever since I was little and I'm um, 25. <laughs> People from all around the world come here to Baltimore just to grab a bite of the famous Fadley's Crab Cake. It's made with fresh Maryland crab and family love. Everybody looks the same. How are you, my dear? Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> so Good to see you. How are you, sir? You looking good? You're looking great. Got something for you. All right. There you go. There you go. You need one of those. Oh, yeah. There you are. Now I'm feeling really crabby. Pardon me. I've, I've got to get a lawyer because there's a clause I have to have checked. <laughs> I've known the folks at Fadley's Seafood for years, but they've been serving up fresh crab cakes even longer. Hi, I'm uh, Nancy Fadley Devine. I own Fadley Seafood. It's been uh, in my family now for, well, four generations, and the fifth is coming up, so we've been around a long time. I think people are astonished to see my parents at 84 and 89 still working. You can get another five pants and do a second batch if you need to with them. People ask her for her autograph, they ask her for a picture, they ask her to hold the babies. You know, it's, it's, it's really fun. I mean, here's this company that's been part of Baltimore for over 130 years. Yeah, right. Uh, what, why, what, what is it about your place that has people coming back? Right. I think it's that people come in here and go right away. There's a warmth. Uh -huh. There, it's like walking to somebody's home. That's they're they're happy to have you. Uh -huh. You know, come and you feel. Oh my gosh, I feel at home. And I get people. We were here 20 years. It's exactly the same. In fact, Fadley still stands in its original location, founded here by John W. Fadley Sr. in 1886. Started off as a seafood stall, but over the generations grew into a Baltimore tradition, led by Bill and Nancy Devine along with their daughter. Dami Han, and I am the fourth generation of Fadley's, so I do everything. <laughs> Give them a little bit of a 
smorgasbord of everything. Going over here to fillet a fish, over here to shuck an oyster, over there to steam a crab, back here to fry, up here to make a crab cake, back down on the phone, running in the shipping department. A tray like that is about, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bushels of crabs in order to get that tray. That's a lot of picking up. And I don't think people realize how much work goes into getting an all jumbo lump. Growing up, did you did you think you were going to end up here? You were going to be doing this? No, <laughs> no. But it was hard to get away from, and I couldn't see it going away. I couldn't see see it ending with my parents. So the pandemic hit. Yes. You really had to step up. My father called me and I said, Dad, you guys cannot come in here. You know, the, we, we don't know anything about this this virus and, and the effects, especially on the elderly. And I know you want to be here, but you can't. And he said, Damien, do whatever you do, whatever you can to make payroll. It just makes me cry when I think about it. Um, he said, just make sure that we don't have to lay anybody off. I don't want to lay anybody off. I don't want anybody to lose their job. And we did it. And I saw it back when I came here in the 90s and I still see it today. This truly is a family. Oh, it is a family. <laughs> and, it, and it's funny because I often tell people, mom and dad don't treat the employees any differently than they treat me. And that's the God's honest good, truth. <laughs> which could be a good or a bad. <laughs> that's the God's honest truth. And that's why you end up having so many multi-generation families staying here. That's right. Fadley's isn't just a family-owned business. It's run by family as well. Multiple generations of employees, father and daughter, father and son, mom and daughter, all building a home here. I've been here since a junior in high school, so I've been doing the thing for a while. I'm gonna say it's been around 33, 34 years. And I started at the end of 79, a uh, week before my son was born. I started at 14 years old, and I'll be 42 years old in December. It's always a challenge working with family. <laughs> a lot of personalities, but you love each other and it always works, you know, it always works well. What's, what's really, really bad is when your kids are grandmothers. Well, we were in the middle of an interview. <laughs> oh, you just broke in. <laughs> you have to start over? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you were saying about the challenges of working with family? <laughs> While the family spirit makes customers feel at home, it's Fadley's crab cakes that keep them coming back. What kind of oil do you cook your crab cakes in? Soybean. Soybean, thank you. So excited to have this crab cake. And I watch people for the first time put it in their mouth and they go, oh my God. <laughs> and they're standing at a table in a market. Yeah. They're not sitting down to a white tablecloth and having somebody serve it on a silver platter. It's on a paper plate, but it's, it belongs on a silver platter. Nancy created a recipe in 1987, saying she's never changed it. So besides yourself, how many other people know the Fadley's Crab Cake recipe? Sleep with her, she won't tell me. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> Why would I tell him? <laughs> so some people use breadcrumbs. You use it's crushed broken up saltines. Salty. Broken saltines, yes. And not, not fine because no. you have to use more. Now, so, and then this is the magic sauce. Is this the secret sauce? Yes. So it's just enough to mix the ingredients it's together, right. nothing more. That's right. And the fine. big ball of crab right there. That's it. Boom. Yes. Oh boy. Oh. It's just like I remember eating it 26 years ago. You know what? I'm told that all the time when people come in here. The best part about this is you haven't changed a thing. Now this is a legacy. Well, we know how the crabs end up, but how do they get them? Let's go find out. Coming up, the generations of black watermen who've made a living 
pulling in Maryland's most famous catch. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> The Chesapeake Bay men and women who work these waters are probably just as famous as the legendary catch that they pull out. And in fact, it's backbreaking work that is passed on from generation to generation, including blackjacks. Those were the black watermen who worked these waters all the way back into the 1800s and are a vital part of this community. The Chesapeake Bay is home to a vast variety of seafood, but none as valuable or as well known as the blue crab. The catch here makes up over a third of the nation's supply, and on average, more than 50 million pounds of blue crabs are harvested from the bay. I'm Captain Tyrone Meredith, charter boat captain, owner and operator of the Island Queen 2. Captain Meredith knows these waters well, he grew up on them. I'm the fourth generation uh, waterman, and my grand, great grandfather, he worked on the water, my grandfather, and my father. We've been here ever since the 1860s, making a living working on the Chesapeake Bay. This has been the way of life for generations of watermen here in Kent Narrows, a town just 50 miles south of Baltimore. For hundreds of years, they've caught, processed, and sold blue crabs to markets up and down the eastern shore. By the mid to late 1800s, Kent Narrows had also become one of many unlikely havens on the bay for free and enslaved African Americans. There was more black uh, watermen anywhere on the whole east coast, probably in the United States. Those watermen, also known as blackjacks, forged their path to liberation on the water. Their expertise essential to the booming seafood industry. So much so, the government granted some black watermen seamen's protection certificates, providing sailors with American citizenship and a path to economic freedom. Hey, Lewis, I'm coming up on you now. Okay, I got you. Yeah. How'd it bite in the day? This morning it did pretty good. Well, being out here is your own boss. You do what you want to do and let nobody tell you, go get me this or go get me that. 75-year-old Lewis Carter still finds that same sense of freedom on the water today. He's also one of the last generations of black watermen alive. Every morning before the sun rises, he sets out to catch crabs in the bay. I started in 1961, I'll be 15, and I've been at it ever since. 
Right now, uh, I'm going down the line, and uh, when I get to the other end, I'll throw it off. Crabs will come up on that bait. The pressure from the water pushes them back in this dipper. Okay, these are the big, large males. You put them in one basket. That's a female with red claws. Put them in one basket. Be one of the last Mohegans left. There's not too many people that still work, make a living from the water. Most of them moved away, got all the jobs, and it's changing because it's harder to make a living from the bay. Crabbing season runs from spring into late fall, but changes in climate, cost, and labor have made each successive year more challenging. As younger generations take up new trades, there are less people working the waters and ultimately fewer black watermen. Back when I started, it was a plenty of black water, but they died out and the younger ones never taking their place. It, in, a, in one way, it makes me feel bad, you know, and I don't think it'll be no chance of more black water. I really do believe that. Captain Meredith estimates there are fewer than a dozen black watermen on the bay. Like many of his peers, he's had to turn to other work. Back when I was crabbing teenager, I caught highs 50 bushel a day. Right now, crab is catching two or three bushel a day. Now I started running charters, fishing charters, because crabbing started declining and, and the fishing was more lucrative money-wise. And educational. His charters are an opportunity to keep stories of the blackjacks alive for generations ahead. Although tradition on these waters is changing, one thing remains the same. Nothing tastes like the Chesapeake Bay Maryland crab. It's got that certain taste to them. And it, it, it's the only place like that in the world is the Chesapeake Bay Blue Crab. Next, an up and coming Baltimore chef inspired by his family's love of cooking. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Back in Baltimore, a new generation is putting a spin on the crab cake. I'm Alex Perez. I'm the owner of Poppy Cuisine. 
I'm an artist at heart. So uh, cooking, um, the arts of culinary, you know, that's something that I'm very passionate about. Not necessarily having a recipe to go off of and just getting in the kitchen, freestyling and coming up with a masterpiece. It's that freestyling approach that brings people through these doors, clamoring for a taste. Jumbo, crab, crab is king in Baltimore, so um, you're going to see crab cakes, uh, crab cake fries, crab cake egg rolls. Everyone's been going crazy over it as well. This is the ball. So I just come back to that and I enjoy it every time I come here. We actually live in D.C., so we rode all the way up here an hour just to come here. Right now I'm drizzling our warhead and our aioli sauces on it. I have a family from the Dominican Republic. I'm Afro-Latino. I'm black on my mother's side. And pretty much I um, just always had a love for food and uh, cooking food, eating food. So learning how to cook from my, my dad. So my dad taught me how to cook at the age of 10. I grew up, you know, watching my grandmother cook a, a lot as well. So I started pretty much combining the uh, foods that I learned to cook from my grandmother with the foods I learned how to cook from my father. And that's kind of like how the uh, whole poppy cuisine, you know, was, was born it's in her kitchen, essentially. That was eight years ago. While working a full-time job, Alex began building a new business on the side, catering food out of his grandma's kitchen. In February 2020, he was finally able to open a restaurant. Then the pandemic hit. Of course, you know, a month later, we get the news that we have to shut down and only do takeout. So that just opened up the, uh, the, the floodgates, essentially. And you have people standing in line hundreds of people <laughs> on the block and in that mass, you know, cars double parked up and down the streets. And it was it was just may it was mayhem. During a global crisis, the city Alex was born and raised in rallied around him. Now, Poppy Cuisine is packed with locals and tourists alike. But the chef stays true to his roots, running it with close family and friends. My little sister, Natasha. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Natasha. My big bro, Alex. I can employ family members, friends, and so forth, you know, that uh, people who I grew up with, people that I'm close to, and it's very rewarding, you know? Coming up, I'm going to grab my apron and join Alex and Grandma Gloria for a lesson in cooking crap. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. I wanted to meet Alex and his grandma Gloria, the inspiration behind his cooking. So I dropped by their kitchen to say hello. Well, I know I picked up from my grandmother, my mother-in-law, and um, just put my own spin on certain dishes. I didn't follow it to the, the recipe to the letter. Were you able to add a little? Bit? Yeah, but he's always asked me uh, when I fix the dish, well, "What did you put in this? How did you do? How did you do this?" And I would tell him, I said, you don't have to follow to the letter, you know, put your own spin. And Alex has done just that, turning the classic crab cake into an egg roll. Genius! The ingredients, simple. A pound of jumbo lump crab, panko breadcrumbs, aged cheddar cheese, 
egg roll wrappers, and a couple of sauces and microgreens to top it off. There's the star of the show, the crab meat. Put on an apron, I've got rubber gloves on. All right, patient's ready. So how do we get started, Alex? Yeah, so first what you wanna do is take, we have some uh, Maryland jumbo lump crab here. Uh -huh. So for the most part, I shouldn't have much shells in, but mm -hmm. I typically, uh, I like to sift through it. Just gotta see if there's any shells, and if so, you can put the shells right back in this oh. uh, container. There you go. So Gloria, did you know you were ra helping raise a, a culinary genius? <laughs> well, no, but I know he liked to eat. <laughs> <laughs> This sauce in particular is our, our crab sauce mix. Okay. So we're gonna drizzle a little bit at a time. Cause I don't wanna put too much, right. just enough to uh, bind. You got enough fowl? Yep, I think I'll have enough. Oh, she's she's <laughs> stayed by me, I like this. I like this lady. This is why I'm so particular uh, about, you know, when I'm doing things in the kitchen. Uh huh. Start actually rolling these things up. Yes. Why? Why? Why do you think this this recipe is, is so popular at the restaurant? The most popular. Um, well, I think uh, because it, it pretty much gives you the ability to uh, take a a bar more favorite and you know make it handheld and on on the go. Uh -huh. You know, it's throwing your hand. Kind of street food. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's one of the, the biggest reasons it's it's very popular. Other than the taste as well. Right, well, exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah, because that's You can take taste. it with you, but if it's not right, tasty, right, exactly. you're gonna, uh, come back for it. Yeah, so what we're gonna um, do is uh, we're gonna take like a, a pinch of uh, crab. It's around like a yeah, quarter cup or so. Mm -hmm. We're gonna sit in the middle. Is that too yeah. much? Yeah, we're gonna take a little bit out, a little pinch out. Actually, we're gonna put a little bit more in. Yeah. Which is it? <laughs> All right, so that's perfect right there. Oh, perfect, sorry. perfect. <laughs> and we're gonna Just literally fold them up envelope style. What is it about cooking and family that, that, that is so important? Yeah, I think uh, for me, um, you know, living a, a busy life as a business owner and a dad, a husband, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, food is a uh, opportunity for family to come together, you know, talk about things, especially if you haven't seen each other in a long time. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a way for us to connect, so. Hey, and Lawrence, is, it, is it true you've never done this before? No, I haven't. It's true. Oh. Could have fooled me that you never did this before. Look at that. <laughs> Bam! Done! Faster than I did. Wow! <laughs> Wow, that natural grandma thing. Love it. So now we're gonna get get the deep fryer up here and fry these bad boys up. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Woo! You had to describe the heart of your cuisine. What is it, and and how does Baltimore uh, kind of part of that? Pretty much my my story, and I think that connects very well to our Baltimore. You know because. You know, I, I grew up here, you know, all my life, and I think everything that um, I faced during the time that, you know, I, I started this company up until now, I've been transparent about, and it resonated very well with the uh, the, uh, the people in Baltimore, and they, they watched my journey through the years, and I feel like that's that's really the, the heart of what mm -hmm. I do. Make sure and the around the edges and everything, things like that, so that's why I keep turning them, you know, so it doesn't <laughs> fry on one particular side too much. And, Want to even fry? Mm. Nice and golden. So you want to cut these diagonally. So, yeah. so I'm going to drizzle. This is our aioli sauce, house made, and this is our warhead sauce right here. <laughs> so the sauce is kind of sweet, has a tangy bite to it. Oh, kind of like Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. Well, I guess there's only thing, one thing left to do. Yeah, and that's Try the piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crab cake egg roll. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Chef Hawk, you have done Baltimore Pride. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our time here in Baltimore is coming to an end. We tried the traditional crab cake. Tasted a modern spin with crab cake egg rolls and even went straight to the source on the Chesapeake Bay. At the center of it all, one thing still ringing true, food tastes better when you eat it with family. Feel like a heart to get. 
I've never done this behind a bar. I know, you look, you're slinging it pretty well. Thank you. Yeah. I like a little bit of a kick, put some tahini on the rim. I know it's early, but whatever. Here you go, Willie. Aaron, thank you so much. I'm honored. Cheers. Cheers. A toast to the end of a tour where Marin Morris sold out venues across the country and mixed up her famous margaritas on the bus. Yeah, I'm just not ready for it to be over. I wish we had done more shows. <laughs> Maybe we can add a few at the end. Yeah, we'll just them here and now. For fun, I'll Tack go. I'll on. go busk in the street. <laughs> yeah. I bet you would actually. You've, uh, done, yeah. you've done it before. I'll open the guitar case. The tour shares a name with her latest album called Humble Quest. What does Humble Quest mean to you? I think from 2020 on uh, to now, I've learned a lot about myself because my tour got canceled. I lost my producer, Busby, in late 2019. And so just everything was really humbling. I think just about being a human. It's like you are not in control. You never were. It was strange for all of us, but I have to imagine for someone who's been on the road for, what, 15 years or something like that, doing shows, grinding, hustling the whole time to just hit the brakes for two years. It was probably disorienting to you in some way. Your husband too, because he's a performer as well. I think the bottom fell out in many ways for me. And I've sort of learned through therapy that I have been doing this hustle since I was 10 or 11 years old. I'm 32. I haven't stopped. It took the world coming to a halt for me to stop. Marin's son Hayes was born in March of 2020 in those first days of the pandemic. I think a lot of identity crises <laughs> happened there. Not just like being a new parent and a new mother and dealing with, you know, postpartum depression for the first time and reeling from that and trying to like find the forest through the trees, but also just knowing my worth without someone clapping for me. I kind of felt like this sounds so cheesy, but I, I felt like a woman, like the, the, the sort of form I was supposed to take a long time ago that I've been in arrested development over, it finally came because I had to stop doing this thing that always gave me this um, pride. So how did that manifest itself? What did it mean to you to become a woman, as you say? I think that I'm a child still in a lot of ways that I haven't properly matured uh, because I've always been able to throw it into music. But as far as relationships go, I think from a very early age, I've been taking care of myself and other people and just performing. And um, yeah, I think when you have your own kid and you, you kind of can't go to work, your purpose is very different. And so you kind of have to just like ch chisel it out of stone yourself. And I think I was probably supposed to do that a long time ago, but it just didn't happen until now. Don't know why, I don't know why I let you, but I do. Cause I love chasing after you. She spent the time at home reflecting and writing songs with her husband, Ryan Hurd a fellow singer-songwriter. As far as being creative with him goes, it was like, can we just please write something light to pull me out of this like pandemic doldrum and I don't wanna you know, sit in the ashes very long here. So he kind of just helped me in song form and in just conversation form, figure out how to get to the, the light. I drove circles around this town, to ride circles around She began to find that light by reaching back to her early days in Nashville, long before she was a Grammy-winning chart-topping star. Circles Around This Town stands out among other great songs. What is the message of that song? What are you saying? Well, the, the line that I love is, I thought when I had hit it, it all looked different, but I've still got the pedal down, driving circles around this town. And that to me was like, I moved to Nashville 10 years ago with nothing. And I really had to build myself up and build my song repertoire just from scratch. And I think I still have that grind in me that is like, your best song is the last one you wrote. So you always are trying to one up yourself. And that's the beautiful competition 
art form that is Nashville songwriting is like all your friends are better than you. Mm. And it just, it doesn't make you downtrodden. It makes you excited to show them the last thing you wrote. So that community there is really special to me because I feel like they hold me accountable. They also make me a better writer every single time I go back into the room. Yeah, isn't it interesting? I've found this too, where you think in the course of your career, there's gonna be some moment where you go, I did it. And you put your feet up. But if you have the motor that people like you and I probably both have, yeah. you never put your feet up, right? Yeah, I mean, Ryan, my husband jokes that uh, he'll be wheeling me off the casino <laughs> stage <laughs> when we're like, I'm 90 or something. That's gonna be my fate. It's like, I'll probably just die on stage. <laughs> Um, because I love it so much. I don't want to take time off. I don't like the idea of saving up a bunch and retiring because it's not a job to me. It's, it's like my passion. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> After coming up on the honky-tonk circuit in her home state of Texas, Morris spent her early years in Nashville writing songs for other people. But it was the one she kept for herself that changed her life. My Church was a coming out party for Morris, and the hits have been coming ever since. I'm a 90s baby in my 80s Mercedes. Including two number one singles. When the bones are good, the rest don't Off of her second album, Girl. Don't you hang your head low. And of course, the relentlessly popular song, The Middle, where she sang lead vocals with Gray and Zed. Did you have any sense when you put that song out that it was going to become this? massive hit number one and change your life in the way that it did? I think it just opened up a huge world audience to my voice. And so if anyone ever heard that like, baby, they'd be like, who is this? Oh, Maren Morris, who's that? And then, you know, they would go to my previous work. So why don't you just meet me in the middle, middle, in the middle, middle? When you sit down to write any new album now, do you think about hits at this point? Or are you just trying to write great songs? I think a hit for me at this point is just a byproduct of hopefully a great song. I can't go in and create with that formula in my head of what I think a hit will be because then you end up following a trend that someone has already set. Um, and I think that you want it to be the opposite of that. You want to set it and create something that's new, or if it is reminiscent or nostalgic of something else, it's done in a way that's really fresh. And um, so, yeah, it's at this point, I, I've had crossover success. I've had songs on pop radio, on hot AC, on country. I'll always take it when it comes, but I don't go in and set out to 
be the hit maker. I just want to write a great song and I want to connect with my friends that I'm writing it with and connect to a higher self or God or whatever it is in that room. That's what I'm there to do. I hesitated to use the term crossover, but since you used it, yeah. what does that mean to you exactly? Because it seems to me that genre doesn't really matter as much anymore. Yeah. If you're good, you're good, and people find it wherever it is. Everything has gone over to streaming, and um, people are just pulling up playlists based on mood, yeah. uh, which I love. That's kind of how I search for things. But respecting and staying true to a root of what made you fall in love with a genre in the first place is important, but um, I, it's not my Bible. Uh, I think that I am so influenced by so many genres and I've never said otherwise. Like from my church on, it's always been the kitchen sink. Success in music has given Morris a voice outside of it too. She has been outspoken on social issues from abortion rights and gun control to the need for diversity in country music and defending trans youth. You use your voice and your platform to speak out on issues. When you started to do that, was there any trepidation of, I'm about to step in it, and now I'm gonna be in the middle of it? Yeah, I think it's gotten more galvanized since I've had my son that I am really trying to make something beyond music, and I want people to look around at my shows and realize okay, this is really loving and safe and comfortable. Like no matter what walk of life or where you come from, I want you to be able to be safe at my show. And I'm willing to be uncomfortable to do that. Is there a risk to it? Because I would say I'm a fan of country music. Most artists aren't gonna sit down in an interview and talk about the things you talk about or to even go on social media and take on those issues because they say, maybe I believe that, maybe I do feel that way. It's just not worth the fight. It's not worth losing fans. Do you feel any hit from doing that? I mean, Honestly, like when I put my church out, I, I kind of got my first dose of criticism of people saying the song is like blasphemous at my church. And I remember, you know, oh wow, I'm really gonna have to have some thick skin to get through this if this is like the song that's already pissing people off in a very weird way. So I think from the get-go, I've gone through the chapters of, um, feeling just the, the criticism and knowing that, you know what, you're gonna piss people off either way, so you better let them know where you stand. And I think that, yeah, I've probably lost listeners along the way, um, but I think the ones I've gained and the ones I've retained, they know exactly who I am and what they're getting, and I see the residual effect of it now that time has passed of the positivity that it's ingrained into the, the fan base. Um, so even if you take a hit here and then, you know, here and there, it's, it's, uh, it's worth it. With the Humble Quest tour now wrapped, it seems Morris has a new itch. I wanna do Broadway. You do? Yeah, I've really tried to just scare myself the last few years. I like hosted a late night show, had never done that. Yeah. I flew with the Air Force Thunderbirds in like a fighter jet. <laughs> I'm talking to you, I'm just kidding. Um, That's an adventure. Yeah. Living her life with some spice and a kick. That is delicious, truly. Not just because you made it. Thank you for giving Cheers. me a bar to do it in. <laughs> Cheers again. Cheers. Thank you. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
the best player in the band? Me. Whether holding a guitar or a ping pong paddle, Marcus Mumford can play. We used to take a table on tour. I should be much better than that. Very backspinny. A lot of backspin Ooh. going on. Oh. At the moment, the Mumford & Sons frontman is out on the road without his bandmates, touring behind his debut solo album, Self-Titled. It's a proper album in the way we don't see them anymore, which is you've got to listen to the whole thing from one to ten to hear the full story. Yeah, me and Beyonce trying to there keep, you the, go. keep the album fires burning. What made you want to sit down, step away from Mumford for a bit, and tell this story? I didn't think of it. I wasn't intentional about it at the beginning. I just wanted to write songs again. The first two songs that came out were Cannibal and Grace, which are the first two songs on the record. And as soon as I'd written them, I showed them to the guys in the band. I said, I don't know if this is a band record. I don't know if it's even a record yet, but it feels like something I maybe should do on my own. And they all completely agreed and supported it. So then the songs just started rolling one after the other. I spent about 18 months writing and recording. Um, enlisted more support than I've ever had for anything I've done. So it's weird that it's called a solo record. It's the most collaborative piece of music I've ever worked on. And, and yeah, the, the songs really led it. I was determined to follow the creative where it led. The album opens with Cannibal, Mumford's deeply personal and painful song about the sexual abuse he suffered as a child. But when I began to tell, it became the hardest thing I ever said out loud. It's so weird with songs because you take the most private things that yeah. you have and that moment of artist behavior where you write a song about something really personal and then you do the most public thing you could do with it and you go and publicize it, play it to people and you, it goes on the radio or whatever. It, it's just a really weird thing that we do as artists. But I sort of refused to call it a record until I had all the songs, because I just didn't want to think about releasing it until I knew there was something there to release. And then I figured I'd think about that stuff later. So really, I didn't even call it an album until late last year. And then this year, started thinking about how to present it to people. And at that point, I started thinking, oh, I'm going to have to talk about this. I'm going to have to. And, and seeing that more as an opportunity than some sort of punishment is how I've approached it. And it feels good. I feel kind of free and happy and kind of fulfilled by, by doing the process. Was it a difficult decision or it sounds like it wasn't really a decision? It wasn't really a decision, no. Once I'd written it, I you know, just became part of the collection of songs along with the other nine on the record. Um, and then early this year, I started thinking, okay, this is going to be put out somehow. I know a lot of people have stepped out and said, oh my gosh, he's telling my story, I can tell mm. mine, things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's the reason I called it self-titled rather than using my name. Because I love the idea that other people might be able to access parts of my mm. story and project their own onto it or feel something from their own story in mine, which is really cool. Uh, it's sort of the magic of music, I think. After Cannibal comes Grace a song that recounts the experience of Mumford telling his mother about the abuse only recently. I thought I'd, I'd talk my mum through that stuff and I hadn't. So when I played her Cannibal was the first time she kind of clocked it. Wow. And so I wrote Grace, like the first lyric is, well, how should we proceed without things getting too heavy? And that sort of acts, I think, as an invitation for the audience to join me on what I think becomes a story about freedom and recovery and has a lot of hope in it. I'm a I'm a Beyonce guy. She always talks about leaving people with hope, you yes. know. And that's true, I think, on every song on the record. The first song ends with beginning again, and, um, and then it kind of goes on from there. The album closes with a song about forgiveness, co-written by Mumford's friend, you Grammy winner Brandi Carlile. Release you from all of the blame I know how. The first lyric in the first song is, if I could forgive you. And the last one is, I will. And it's a statement of intent. It's not necessarily saying forgiveness is done and dusted. I think it's more of a process, like a left foot, right foot thing. Like, I'm going to choose to do this now. Did you feel like you needed to forgive yourself for something? Oh, yeah, for tons of stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. From a really early age, had things hidden in my life. And they would cascade into other hidden things. And it just, you get tangled up in it all. And so unpicking that and forgiving yourself for that stuff, I think is an important part of kind of recovery. Have you found forgiveness, not just for yourself, but beyond? Uh, is that last song true? 
Well, I think I certainly find myself in a, I, I think with more access to compassion for people who behave in ways that seem like abhorrent or heinous to me. And behind like all these stories and certainly my own of like bad behaviors or behaviors that really affect other people in negative ways, there's normally a story underneath that. And so I think I'm able to not just see the way someone presents, but think, and I wouldn't project a story onto them, but think like, you've got a bunch of stuff going on in your life. And it seems by the way you're presenting to me that you haven't had the opportunity to look at that stuff. So I, instead of just writing someone off completely and saying like, you're not a person I want to ever associate with, which is that there's a lot of that in our culture at the moment. Yes. And I get it uh, completely. But the fact that it's more complicated than just one single narrative, nor, normally there's layers of narratives there. I think I've got more access to compassion, maybe, than I did before. Self-titled is dedicated to Mumford's wife, the Oscar-nominated actress Carrie Mulligan. The pair have been married since 2012 and have two young children. You know, I think Yoko gave creative partners like sometimes a bit of a bad rep. There was one day actually we were at the studio and Carrie was showing up and she was driving and they had like these really fancy little placards to, to put in front of your parking spots. So like one saying Marcus Mumford on it and I parked there and she called me and she's like, where do I park? I said, there's a slot allocated for you. And when she showed up, I'd got them to print a Yoko sign and put it in her parking spot, which I was thrilled about. She's like, good gag, babe. She liked it. Uh, she liked yeah. it. Um, but I wouldn't have made it without her. There's good reason that it's dedicated to her. And she's been phenomenally supportive all the way. It's cool. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. Love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest development. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Born in California to parents who were leaders in their church, Mumford moved with the family back to London at six months old. His prodigious talent for music was born in the kitchen. Do you remember, Marcus, when the spark was lit for you in terms of music? The kitchen in my household growing up was the place where we listened to the most music outside of the car. My mum's an amazing chef. She would be in the kitchen, make stuff, and I would sit on the floor, listen to music. And I remember pulling out pots and pans really? because I started on the drums. 
And then, yeah, listening to music with my mum in the kitchen. She had a vinyl player, so I put on House of the Rising Sun by the Animals and um, Slow Train Coming. She had those records. It's a good taste. And then Talis, a lot of vocal music. Wow. She was a kind of singer uh, in a choir. And you'd so, offer a little percussion. A little it. percussion, some harmonies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then at what point did you say, I know you left college to pursue this. At what point did you say, this is something I really want to go after. I How's still have, I, in my head, I still haven't said that. I'm still a semi-professional <laughs> in my head. I'm still going back to college at some point. Um, yeah, I left college on a sabbatical because yeah. I got offered a job playing drums with Laura Marling. And I went and did that. And during the course of that year, we set up the band. Yeah, and jumped up at the end of her shows and played a song or two. And then the first tour of the States we did, we were, half of us were her backing band. And... Wynn and Ben slept in the back lounge on the bus because there weren't enough bunks for us all. And, and then from there on, she really gave us the leg up to play our own shows. And we went from there. Mumford has spent more than a decade performing in arenas around the world with Mumford & Sons, the band he formed with friends in 2007. Their debut album, Sigh No More, was released in the U.S. in 2010, climbing to number two on the Billboard chart while selling more than three million copies and earning the band a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist. We did theaters once, and I think normally you do like two or three theater runs and then move up to the bigger rooms. And it just went, we climbed that ladder fast, I think. We were talking earlier today um, about a performance that grabbed a lot of people, which was at the Grammys in 2011. I was watching again this morning, the way you all are stomping on that riser and then the horns come in and you yep. have this look about two minutes in of just complete joy. <laughs> Almost like, can you believe where we are, boys? Mm. Do you remember that night well? Because yeah, obviously things changed for you after that. Yeah, Bob Dylan said to me during, because that was the one we did with Dylan and the Avit brothers. And Dylan, pretty much the only thing he said to me during rehearsals was keep that boot going, because I was stomping. Yeah. And, and I've, I've considered that a mantra. <laughs> it's led to a lot of four on the floor songs. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I think and it was funny, because after we played our song, the Avits played their song, we went behind the curtain to get ready to all come on to play Maggie's Farm with Dylan. And I think it was probably when the live broadcast was happening, to however many tens of millions of people. I think it was the first time he'd heard our music, but he kind of liked it. And we came back while the Avis were playing and he walked over to me and he went, play that again. And I still had my guitar in my hands. And I was like really quietly, because we're behind the curtain, the Avis are right there. I start playing in the cave and he goes, I can sing on that. Let's do Maggie's Farm to that. And we've been practicing for three days. We were all like, what are you talking, what do you mean? But you're Bob Dylan, we'll do whatever you tell us to do. He's like, I'm gonna sing it on that. And then his bass player, Tony, came over and was like, Bob, we're not doing that. You know, we practiced. <laughs> we're literally walking on stage in 30 seconds. Is that an so, out-of-body experience that Bob Dylan is leaning in and giving yeah, you notes, like, oh, let's like jam yeah, this way? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, totally. But one I'll never forget, you know. Cause I know my weakness, know my voice. Mumford & Sons' next two albums debuted at number one making the band a foot-stomping international sensation that fans will be happy to hear is just on a break. The band isn't broken up. I also see it as like, hopefully, one in very many records I make throughout my career. A new way of making music on his own, giving Mumford a new perspective too. I think I've taken myself slightly less seriously, which helps. And I know it's just a period of time in my life and I'll go back to the band next and I'm really excited about that. But for now, I'm just trying to enjoy this, this period. Oh, yeah. Just teed that I'm one done for you. I'm done. Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. Yeah. Well, hello.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new Pop Star Plus coming up on today's show with the Golden Globes just a week away. We're going to revisit a conversation where the stars will be getting a lot of buzz. That is Austin Butler for playing Elvis. Plus, we're going to share Mean Girls star Jonathan Bennett's favorite things to watch with you. And then we're going to be honoring the legendary Diane Keaton just ahead of her birthday. That's all to come. But first, here's today's Pop Star. We're going to start with Elvis. It's been a big year for the King. Thanks to Austin Butler's Golden Globe nominated performance in Boz Lerman's biopic. Here's a little bit of that if you missed it. See, there's acting like somebody who was a real person in history, and then right. there's there's like becoming, becoming that person. That's a good point. And that's what Austin awesome yeah. did in that role. Incredible. Yeah. By the way, this weekend, the Elvis movie celebrating what would have been the King's 88th birthday by offering free screenings all across the U.S. and Canada. Ten cities will host the showings on Sunday. If you can't make it to the theater, you can catch the behind-the-scenes special. It streams on HBO Max. It's called Just a Boy from Tupelo. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Graceland, as you can imagine, will be packed this weekend. They've got a bunch of festivities, too. Uh, Presley's family's home set to host four days of celebrations, including including a new exhibition and an appearance by Lisa Marie. Next up, the Grammys. What do these two tracks by Harry Styles and Doja Cat have in common? Craig was more familiar with, yeah, the, like <laughs> with the former number as opposed to the latter. But there was As It Was and Woman, both those songs nominated for Record of the Year at the Grammys. Oh. If either of those songs win, it'll be the shortest track time-wise to take home the trophy more than five decades. Doja, Doja's track comes in at two minutes and 52 seconds. Okay. Wow. And Harry's is even shorter than that. Well, give me some perspective here. What's normal? Well, I have 340. Okay. Wow. Maybe, maybe more. Well, That's older. probably the average, though. So. It's a lot shorter. I feel like older songs used to be What long. is? Like older songs used to be a lot shorter. Well, Fifth Dimension in 1967 was the shortest track to ever win Record of the Year of the Grammys. Okay. I don't know the time length, but Up, Up, and Away was the name of the track. You amaze me with your knowledge. No, that was written in. I can't take credit. Oh, for that. I thought you just like. Yeah. The fact that we had that graphic right there means oh. I, didn't, I didn't come from the dome. I was with just that staring one. at you, so I was like, wow. Although they were called the Versatiles in 1965. See, he knew I, that. I didn't know that. He knew that. Next up, our buddy Martha Stewart, the food and lifestyle experts offering some tips for folks participating in something called Dry January. Never heard of it. In a hilarious new ad for Tito's, Stewart shows off the many ways that you can use a bottle of vodka for pretty much anything other than drinking. If you've got Tito's lying around, don't just stare at it. Use it. Say goodbye to musty smells. Add it to your pasta sauce for a little extra kick. And maybe a little bit more. Spice up your Friday night by cutting through dirt and grime. And nothing tenderizes your favorite meat like Cheetos. That's funny. It's like an SNL sketch. That's good. It is cute. I What's even we have more- a theme for Martha's next segment here. <laughs> What's even more ironic is you remember a few weeks ago when she came and Which she made that egg dog. dog. Oh, my gosh. Nothing that had dr- everything but vodka yeah, in right, it. Right. Right. That was, right. The, that was the Long Island iced tea of Oof. eggnog. It had everything. <laughs> Uh, and if you don't like uh, dry January, try just a nice damp January. Damp January. Damp, damp January. Damp January. What exactly is damp January? Just less than dry. Uh, <laughs> finally, New Year, New Year. Check out these pictures here. We're going to start 2023 off with some people trying to hit their fitness goals. Okay. How about Shea Mooney wow. of the band Dan and Shea, the country act, kicking off the New Year, is star there. There's a side by side, 50 pound weight loss. Wow. And he wrote the caption, yes. I changed my entire world in six months. If that tired guy on the left can do it, so can you. Wow. Shea, you're my superhero, man. Mm. That is so inspiring. Not everybody is having the easiest time getting into shape. Take a look at Blake Lively's hilarious side by side. The actress poses alongside trainer <laughs> Don Saladino, joking in the caption. Been doing Don Saladino's workout program for months. Now something isn't working. Like of course poking fun at that baby bump. She and Ryan Reynolds expecting baby number four. And now to the reason we call the show Pop Star Plus. A few more headlines for you. We're gonna start with Marin Morris, the Grammy winner, celebrating 10 years since since she moved to Nashville. In a recent post, Marin shared a snapshot from the day that she left 
for the country music city writing. I packed up a U-Haul with a dream and a healthy dose of delusion, moved into a Craigslist place with two room roommates that I didn't know and hustled to get into any writing room I could. The rest, as they say, is history. It was fun to see that other A-list music friends of hers hopped in the comment section to share some words. Kristen Chenoweth wrote, I feel the same way about New York City 20 years ago. You got the right outlook, girl. Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife, wrote, Courage, faith, hard work, you did it all. Can't wait to see what happens in the next 10 years in Nashville for Marin Morris. And finally, Quinta Brunson. Last night, the Abbott Elementary star stopped by The Late Show and taught Stephen Colbert some Philadelphia slang. And if you're not from the city of brotherly love, these might surprise you. What is John? John is a person, place, thing, or idea. Uh, someone call it a noun. <laughs> the only, the Use only... it in a sentence. Yo, this John crazy. <laughs> this one is that a breaks computer? my brain. No, a Mac machine is the same thing as an ATM. Bull. Bull is a, a guy. Am I bull? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she looks exhausted teaching Steve in the slang there. You learn something new every day. How is a Mac machine just have nothing to do with mac and cheese? I, I don't know how that's possible. Coming up next, Austin Butler on his Golden Globe nomination uh, on the portrayal of Elvis ahead of Hollywood's biggest party of the year, the Golden Globes. We're going to revisit how he got into character. Stick around for that. Coming up. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back, Popstar Plus here. Austin Butler took on the role of music icon Elvis, earning himself a much deserved Golden Globe nomination for that portrayal. The film telling the story of Elvis's career, but through the eyes of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks, also nominated for Best Picture. So Austin stopped by Hoda and Jenna's show to talk about his acting process. Take a look. Okay, we're thrilled mm -hmm. to have the king himself in the building, Austin Butler. And it wasn't easy stepping into Elvis Presley's blue suede shoes. In fact, it kept Austin up at night mm -hmm. for two years, but he's been getting incredible rave reviews, yes. including from us, <laughs> on his performance in the buzzy biopic. So let's take a little sneak peek of Austin as Elvis Presley. You're looking for trouble? You came to the right place. You're looking for trouble? Look right in my face. I was born standing up and talking back. My daddy was a green eye. He bore my little wheels misery. Oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, wow. Secondly, watching you physically transform yourself yes. into Elvis Presley was astonishing to us. How did you, how did you get there? It, I, thankfully, I had a year and a half before we started shooting, so I tried everything. You know, I had an incredible movement coach named Polly Bennett who helped me so much, and 
I had a six months period where the film shut down for COVID, where at that point I'd had this year of doing everything, you know, trying everything, watching everything, reading every book on his life. Uh, but then that six months was really where it all marinated. Yeah. You, I feel like you're, you know. you're still Elvis right now. Yeah. <laughs> are you? Are you? It's hard, it, is it hard to you, shake him? Oh, you know, I, I think there's there's habitual things. When you do one thing for two years, yeah, yeah, you create habits. So yeah. I know that I've got habits that are in there, but yeah. it's not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing that is just incredible, and this is what um, Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. the Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. said yeah. about you, is that you didn't phone one thing in. Yeah. And, and that's oh, why we wow. said you didn't sleep for two years. It was yeah. a lot. It was rigorous. But yeah. did it feel in the moment like, was it joyful? Did you feel like this is mm -hmm. something I meant to yeah. do? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was the most joyful thing I've, I've ever been a part of. I mean, it was, it was also the most challenging yeah. thing I've ever mm -hmm. done. But what a privilege to get hmm. to live with Elvis and learn everything about him for two years. And, and, and I mean, it was just the best time of my life. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because Priscilla Presley obviously yes. gave this a big kiss for many, oh, many, yes. many reasons. But I was just thinking about the pressure, not just because there are millions of Elvis fans, but Priscilla herself, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, you know, keeping her eye on this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that was the thing that that really would wake me up every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was waking up around three in the morning, <laughs> even if I went to bed at one. You know, yeah. just because I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up, my heart was pounding, and it was this thing of knowing that, you know, it's, you want to do justice to any human being yeah. that you ever play but with him yeah. you know his family yes. and also all the misunderstandings yes. about yes. his life yes. and his life's been so pulled out of context and so I just for Lisa Marie and, and Priscilla uh -huh. and their entire family mm -hmm. uh, so I just feel I mean and they've just been so I loved warm it. To yeah. me. I loved I looking was, at the pictures of you with his yeah. granddaughter yes. oh my Riley God. who's Riley's an incredible musician she's amazing yeah. Yeah. I mean yeah. and let's talk about the music oh because my gosh. first of all we all have our favorite Elvis song mm -hmm. yeah. as you said he's an icon you are told okay you're gonna sing yeah like, are, this is your voice this is singing. you yeah, singing yeah. what like what were you like okay or were you scared was that part of the waking up I was the yeah because I, I wasn't a, a singer I'm a really shy person as well Oh, that's during a test. Are you still that we did. shy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I still am. I mean, yeah. I have ways that I deal with it now, but I, my my resting state is shy and introverted, <laughs> yeah. and then I kind of have to figure out my way of going to the world. But um, yeah, that that was during an early test, but. I, it was just a thing where I just became obsessed with it. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I, I just wanted to sing as much I, of it I'm as I could. I'm so fascinated about the shy piece because I know a lot of parents are watching their kids yeah. maybe are shy and they're mm. wondering, like, so how do you get up the nerve and all those things to get up and, and do a beautiful scene like the one we showed? I think it's, it's about where you end up channeling your energy. Oh. So often shyness for me came from, you know, fear or uh, insecurity, but often it's like uh, the energy feels like it's coming back in yeah, on yourself. Yeah. You yes. become self-conscious. Yeah. And so for me, it was always, and early on in acting class, that's what helped me because I realized it's about putting your attention on someone the else. The other person. And so you ah. can't be other conscious and self-conscious at the same time. Oh, wow. That's so smart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. That that's we need really to like good. put a, on a pillow. I mean, <laughs> the, the dancing, too, we talked a little bit, but like the movements. You had to really feel it. This it wasn't, wasn't like choreographed. Yeah, because yeah, Elvis was never choreographed. Right. It was all about the music moving him. So for me, I had to touch into those things, like going to a gospel church in Nashville mm -hmm. where 30 of the most incredible gospel singers are singing for eight hours straight and we're stomping our feet. Wow. You start feeling your soul stirring you to wow. move. And so I then knew anytime I wasn't feeling that, I was off. Yeah. So it was always touching back into that. But you're, you got to be incredibly meticulous and specific to get... You know, I mean, that, his things, I mean but, that's yeah. amazing. What, uh, one thing that you and Elvis have yeah. in common, mm -hmm. a heartbreaking thing, is mm -hmm. you both mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. your mothers at 23. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did How did that inspire you to, to get into this role? Well, it was it's that thing where when you first look at Elvis, he, he feels so much larger than life. Mm -hmm. And you look at him like a godlike figure or the mm -hmm. caricature of Elvis. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I fell into that when I, the first month where I was trying yeah. to work on mm -hmm. it, where I taped myself and I watched it back, and I just I saw an impersonation, and I, mm -hmm. so I couldn't send it to Baz. And um, but it was when I learned about his his mm -hmm. mom, and then knowing that it, we were the exact same yes. age, and that just hit mm -hmm. me like it was one of those things where you feel like the stars are aligning, and 
Uh, and so, yeah, that, that just became the most personal thing. Well, that, that, there was a scene that we're not giving anything away, but you are actually, your character Elvis is in his mother's closet. Yeah. Yeah. He's basically, he can't let go of her. Yes. And it was in that moment, yeah. too, I watched and yes. I said, either this guy is either the best actor on earth or he's felt something before, mm -hmm. just like that. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. Yeah, no, we don't want we you to go. We don't. What's See? next? <laughs> How, like, how do you go from yeah. this? Has it been hard to move on? Yeah, you, you get. I got done. I didn't quite know what to do with mm -hmm. myself. You know, you, I was two years. That was my mm -hmm. whole life, and uh, I got done. And I needed to kind of remember mm -hmm. who I was at the end. So I, yeah. I got into pottery in London. I oh, loved yeah. that. You oh, know, that's I, cool. I had the wheel. It was my whole ghost <laughs> moment. I had a lot of that kind of thing, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's awesome. like... Well, a, we are so happy yeah. for you. We're so oh, happy we got you. to witness this thank moment you in your so life. Much. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Oh. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love ya. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> we're back here on Popstar Plus. You might know him best as Aaron Samuels in the hit comedy Mean Girls, or maybe you caught his Hallmark holiday movie. We're talking about Jonathan Bennett, who was kind enough to chat with our Donna Farrison about uh, everything that he watches for our What I Watch series. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Okay, I'm going to ask you some quick questions about what you're watching right now. Great. Okay. What do you watch when you need a good laugh? The Holiday Center on Hallmark Channel. <laughs> Jason DeVito, your family's neighbor. Oh, hi, Sam, Dalton, the brother, which you obviously already know, obviously. I've said obviously twice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you watch when you need a good cry? The Notebook. Me too. Every would time. Also, would also love to see you with Rachel McAdams again. I mean. Why do you wear your hair like that? Your hair looks so sexy pushback. Katie, will you please tell him his hair looks sexy pushback? I, I would, I will, I would be Rachel McAdams' PA at this point. Like anything, just be around her. Like, sure, great. Give me a coffee. Yeah, no problem. Like, whatever you need. <laughs> That's good. What do you watch that reminds you of your childhood? Planes, trains, and automobiles. And Christmas Vacation, because I grew up watching Cri Christmas Vacation is my number one movie. So, Christmas Vacation. What do you watch that may surprise people? Murder documentaries. I watch murder documentaries every single night to fall asleep. What? Because my my therapist says it's because for someone with that's riddled with anxiety like I yeah. am, knowing how the story is going to end gives me a peace of mind because I know how they end. Okay, that makes so much sense. Thank you. Right. For 
clarifying that because I know a lot of people who actually do that and I never really understood. It's the soothing tone of the narrator and then you know at the end someone's going to die. That's just how it is. So like, yeah. you know the outcome, so there's no anxiety. That's how I feel though when I watch Hallmark Christmas movies. Like it soothes my anxiety because I know that go. love will end up happening in the end. Yep. Um, what do you watch when you need comfort food? Oh, Great British Bake Off. Mm, yes. It always makes me hungry though. Is it's idea. so good. What do you watch when you can't fall asleep? Oh, Family Guy. Mm. But not the what? episodes with explosions. Yeah. Good call. What do you watch for the theme song? I know my answer to this. Family Guy. Have you seen The White Lotus though? Yes. Don't you love that theme song? I do love the theme song. I've only seen the first season. I started the second season and it wasn't like grabbing me. The okay, yet, okay. I had to like, everyone's like, you have to get past the first episode. Like the first season I watched it. I was like, what is going on? I'm hooked. What is this? But the second season, we already kind of know what's going on. So you're like, now it's not like a mystery. So I want to like, I need to get past the first episode and really I'm get pulled I'm telling in. you, it gets better. And yeah. if for nothing else, just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Okay, and finally, uh, what do you watch right now that you're currently obsessed with? Enola Holmes, I just watched the movie. I like that a lot. I agree, I love that too. Millie Bobby Brown did a great job. Um, yes. Jonathan Bennett, thank you so much. And congratulations <laughs> on your success with The Holiday Sitter. I know it's going to be a huge hit and you are making so much change and love and it's all good. Thank you so much. Great to hear from Jonathan. Coming up, the legendary Diane Keaton. We have a clip we've dug up from our vault and we'll play it for you right after this. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus, the 2003 film Something's Gotta Give portrayed a couple played by Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton who found love much later in life. Well, this weekend, Diane Keaton's going to mark her 77th year around the sun. And in her honor, we wanted to share this clip where she stopped by the Today Show to talk about that role, one that she says was pure heaven to play. You are in this movie. I am in the movie. Nancy Myers, who yeah. you collaborated with yeah. in Baby Boom mm -hmm. and Father of the Bride, wrote this. And you, neither you nor she, ever thought a movie like this would really be made, did you? Well, I certainly didn't. I think Nancy did because she actually wrote it and spent all that time thinking about it. But to me, it was just like, uh, yeah, uh, are you sure, Nancy? This is where you want to go. And uh, yeah, she did it, though. And, but it, and it exists, and it's it's fabulous. It's very unusual, though, and of course, it's this totally is what unusual. everybody has been glomming on to, the yeah. notion of a mature relationship. Sure, that's Being me. portrayed, yeah, I love that word, <laughs> mature. I'm a mature woman. <laughs> Being portrayed on the big screen in Hollywood yeah. without, you, you know, young, nubile things. But by the way, let me just say for the record, 
You look fantastic. Oh, I love you. Thank you for saying that. But you look fantastic. Oh, well, let's just, it's just a mutual admiration <laughs> society. But no, really. And, and what do you make of the whole thing that people are making a huge deal of the fact that these are two older mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. having sex, falling yeah. in love yeah. um, as lead characters in a mm -hmm. big movie. Mm -hmm. um, were you like, yeah, finally? Yeah, I mean, of course I was. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's the best of all possible worlds because, I mean, I'm, not only do I get to kiss Keanu and have a big romance with him, but I also get to have the same experience with Jack, and he's, the, you know, the original bad boy, and that's about as exciting as it gets. So, I mean, <laughs> what's bad for, for me? As far as I'm concerned, it was just thrilling. And also, you're protected by the words. You know how it is. Like, Nancy's words are so beautiful, and it's so much fun to, you're safe, you're safe because in real life, as you know, when you fall in love, it's more precarious and frightening, but this was just like pure heaven to play. I mean, I think this is the dream of all actresses at any age in your life, is to play someone who, who falls in love and falls so deeply for the first time in her life. And I think it's really unusual that a woman age, you know, 55, for the first time in her life, falls in love. Well, let's I mean, talk about her, because I love yeah. the character, because she's... First of all, she's accomplished. Yeah. She's hugely intelligent. Yeah. But she's also as tightly wound as a drum. And, 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 right? <laughs> she's I a little mean, bit of a control freak. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it must have been such a meaty role to sink your teeth in because she's so cool on so many levels, right? Yeah, absolutely. She's a, well, explain who she is. Her name's Erica Berry. Erica Jane Berry, and she's this, and she's sort of the female equivalent of Neil Simon, right? I mean, that's how successful she is. And she has, of course, the fabulous house in the Hamptons and the most gorgeous daughter anybody could ever want, played beautifully by Amanda Peet. To older women everywhere. Mm -hmm. Keanu Reeves, who plays an emergency room doctor, considerably how about younger how great he is. Yeah, than you, falls in love with, with you. With me, I know, go figure. Uh, love that. All right, we're going to look at a scene of uh, where you're picked up yeah. for a date mm -hmm. by Keanu Reeves, yeah. and guess who answers the door? Mm-hmm. Look who's answering the door. And look who's at the door. We brought you something. A heart-healthy dinner from our cafeteria. Why, thank you. Hello. You look beautiful. Thank you. I like the music behind it. You look hot. All right, so how much fun was it to work with Jack Nicholson? And can you please ask him if he'll do an interview with me? He is such... Yeah, what's the matter with him? What is the matter with him? Tell him know. he needs to sell this movie. No, I mean, he's the king. He's the king of talk. Did you, you know. have a great time, though? Of course he's I had funny. a great time. I had the most fun with him, though, for the two weeks that we were sort of stuck in bed together, semi-naked. <laughs> and I, I really got to know a lot about Jack's love life. Which is really interesting. Well, this is a say. family show, okay? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm what you're referring to. But you're you know, scaring me. He's a big Irish guy, you know. He's a big sentimental slob, and he's a real <laughs> fool for love. I mean, oh, he's a say sucker. The see? Thing. But it's true. He really is. Well, the movie is something. Got it. Something's oh, got to give. Are they going to play give. that song at some point in the movie? Why by not? The way? And we're wishing a very happy early birthday to you. Miss Keaton. All right, folks, that's another great pop star plus in the can. Tomorrow we've got more on the Golden Globes and some nominees to keep your eye on. Have a great day. See you soon.
I love the city of Baltimore. I've been coming here for years. And if there's one thing I know, the city of Baltimore is serious about his crab. I love Baltimore crabs. This is the, the, the stomping ground of crabs. And I've been eating crabs since the time I could sit up at a table. It's a little spicy, salty, and savory, all in one. If I could describe the taste, you can't. You just have to try it. <laughs> you just have to try it. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. When you think Maryland, you got to think Blue Crab, an essential part of the state's culture and cuisine. And no place knows how to cook it up quite like Baltimore. I mean, just as many ways as you can count, you can find ways to eat crab. Of course, there's your basic, your, your steamed crab with the beautiful spices, and you just start whacking that bad boy. You can get all that beautiful meat out. You can get cra canned crab if you'd like. Uh, of course, there's also the fabulous crab mac and cheese with a hot dog. There's the crab dip, there's your crab soup, and of course, the king of crab, the crab cake. Yes, but this is a cake that needs no icing. Crab cakes have been enjoyed by many for centuries throughout the Chesapeake region. But here in Baltimore, they're a way of life. And one of the city's most popular go-tos is tucked away just inside the world-famous Lexington Market. We're headed back to Houston today and we wanted to have the best crab cake in town. We're from Orlando, glad to be here. People have been coming to Fabies for years. Yes. Ever since I was little and I'm um, 25. <laughs> People from all around the world come here to Baltimore just to grab a bite of the famous Fadley's Crab Cake. It's made with fresh Maryland crab and family love. Everybody looks the same. How are you, my dear? Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> so Good to see you. How are you, sir? You looking good? You're looking great. Got something for you. All right. There you go. There you go. You need one of those. Oh, yeah. There you are. Now I'm feeling really crabby. Pardon me. I've, I've got to get a lawyer because there's a clause I have to have checked. <laughs> I've known the folks at Fadley's Seafood for years, but they've been serving up fresh crab cakes even longer. Hi, I'm uh, Nancy Fadley Devine. I own Fadley Seafood. It's been uh, in my family now for, well, four generations, and the fifth is coming up, so we've been around a long time. I think people are astonished to see my parents at 84 and 89 still working. You can get another five pants and do a second batch if you need to with them. People ask her for her autograph, they ask her for a picture, they ask her to hold their babies. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really fun. I mean, here's this company that's been part of Baltimore for over 130 years. Yeah, right. Uh, what, why, what, what is it about your place that has people coming back? Right. I think it's that people come in here and go right away. There's a warmth. Uh -huh. There, it's like walking to somebody's home. That's they're they're happy to have you. Uh -huh. You know, come and you feel. Oh my gosh, I feel at home. And I get people. We were here 20 years. It's exactly the same. In fact, Fadley still stands in its original location, founded here by John W. Fadley Sr. in 1886. Started off as a seafood stall, but over the generations grew into a Baltimore tradition, led by Bill and Nancy Devine along with their daughter. Damie Han, and I am the fourth generation of Fadley's, so I do everything. <laughs> Give them a little bit of a 
smorgasbord of, of everything. Going over here to fillet a fish, over here to shuck an oyster, over there to steam a crab, back here to fry, up here to make a crab cake, back down on the phone, running in the shipping department. A tray like that is about, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bushels of crabs in order to get that tray. That's a lot of picking. And I don't think people realize how much work goes into getting an all jumbo lump. Growing up, did you did you think you were going to end up here? You were going to be doing this? No, <laughs> no. But it was hard to get away from, and I couldn't see it going away. I couldn't see see it ending with my parents. So the pandemic hit. Yes. You really had to step up. My father called me and I said, Dad, you guys cannot come in here. You know, the, we, we don't know anything about this this virus and, and the effects, especially on the elderly. And I know you want to be here, but you can't. And he said, Damien, do whatever you do, whatever you can to make payroll. It just makes me cry when I think about it. Um, he said, just make sure that we don't have to lay anybody off. I don't want to lay anybody off. I don't want anybody to lose their job. And we did it. And I saw it back when I came here in the 90s and I still see it today. This truly is a family. Oh, it is a family. <laughs> and, it, and it's funny because I often tell people, mom and dad don't treat the employees any differently than they treat me. And that's the God's honest good, truth. <laughs> which could be a good or a bad. <laughs> that's the God's honest truth. And that's why you end up having so many multi-generation families staying here. That's right. Fadley's isn't just a family-owned business. It's run by family as well. Multiple generations of employees, father and daughter, father and son, mom and daughter, all building a home here. I've been here since a junior in high school, so I've been doing the thing for a while. I'm gonna say it's been around 33, 34 years. And I started at the end of 79, a uh, week before my son was born. I started at 14 years old, and I'll be 42 years old in December. It's always a challenge working with family. <laughs> a lot of personalities, but you love each other and it always works, you know, it always works well. What's, what's really, really bad is when your kids are grandmothers. Well, we were in the middle of an interview. <laughs> oh, you just broke in. <laughs> you have to start over? Yes. <laughs> you, you, you were saying about the challenges of working with family? <laughs> Just a few of them, you know? Just a few. While the family spirit makes customers feel at home, it's Fadley's crab cakes that keep them coming back. What kind of oil do you cook your crab cakes in? Soybean. Soybean, thank you. So excited to have this crab cake. And I watch people for the first time put it in their mouth and they go, oh my God. <laughs> and, I go, and they're standing at a table in a market. Yeah. They're not sitting down to a white tablecloth and having somebody serve it on a silver platter. It's on a paper plate, but it's, it belongs on a silver platter. Nancy created her recipe in 1987, saying she's never changed it. So besides yourself, how many other people know the Fadley's Crab Cake recipe? Sleep with her, she won't tell me. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> Why would I tell him? <laughs> so some people use breadcrumbs. You use it's crushed broken, up saltines. Salty, broken saltines, yes. And not, not fine because no. you have to use more. Now, so, and then this is the magic sauce. Is this the secret sauce? Yes. So it's just enough to mix the ingredients it's together, right. nothing more. That's right. And the fine. big ball of crab right there. That's it. Boom. This. Oh boy. Oh. It's just like I remember eating it 26 years ago. You know what? I'm told that all the time when people come in here. The best part about this is you haven't changed a thing. Now, this is a legacy. Well, we know how the crabs end up, but how do they get them? Let's go find out. Coming up, the generations of black watermen who've made a living 
pulling in Maryland's most famous catch. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Chesapeake Bay men and women who work these waters are probably just as famous as the legendary catch that they pull out. And in fact, it's backbreaking work that is passed on from generation to generation, including blackjacks. Those were the black watermen who worked these waters all the way back into the 1800s and are a vital part of this community. The Chesapeake Bay is home to a vast variety of seafood, but none as valuable or as well known as the blue crab. The catch here makes up over a third of the nation's supply, and on average, more than 50 million pounds of blue crabs are harvested from the bay. I'm Captain Tyrone Meredith, charter boat captain, owner and operator of the Island Queen 2. Captain Meredith knows these waters well, he grew up on them. I'm the fourth generation uh, waterman, and my grand, great grandfather, he worked on the water, my grandfather, and my father. We've been here ever since the 1860s, making a living working on the Chesapeake Bay. This has been the way of life for generations of watermen here in Kent Narrows, a town just 50 miles south of Baltimore. For hundreds of years, they've caught, processed, and sold blue crabs to markets up and down the eastern shore. By the mid to late 1800s, Kent Narrows had also become one of many unlikely havens on the bay for free and enslaved African Americans. There was more black uh, watermen anywhere on the whole east coast, probably in the United States. Those watermen, also known as blackjacks, forged their path to liberation on the water. Their expertise is essential to the booming seafood industry. So much so, the government granted some black watermen seamen's protection certificates, providing sailors with American citizenship and a path to economic freedom. Hey, Lewis, I'm coming up on you now. Okay, I got you. Yeah. How'd it bite in the day? This morning it did pretty good. Well, being out here is your own boss. You do what you want to do and let nobody tell you, go get me this or go get me that. 75-year-old Lewis Carter still finds that same sense of freedom on the water today. He's also one of the last generations of black watermen alive. Every morning, before the sun rises, he sets out to catch crabs in the bay. I started in 1961, now I'll be 15, and I've been at it ever since. 
Right now, uh, I'm going down the line, and uh, when I get to the other end, I'll throw it off. Crabs will come up on that bait. The pressure from the water pushes them back in this dipper. Okay, these are the big, large males. You put them in one basket. That's a female with red claws. Put them in one basket. He's one of the last Mohegans left. Not too many people that still work, make a living from the water. Most of them moved away, got all the jobs, and it's changing because it's harder to make a living from the bay. Crabbing season runs from spring into late fall, but changes in climate, cost, and labor have made each successive year more challenging. As younger generations take up new trades, there are less people working the waters and ultimately fewer black watermen. Back when I started, it was a plenty of black watermen, but they died out and the younger ones never taken their place. It, in, a, in one way, it makes me feel bad, you know, and I don't think it'll be no chance no more black watermen. I really do believe that. Captain Meredith estimates there are fewer than a dozen black watermen on the bay. Like many of his peers, he's had to turn to other work. Back when I was crabbing teenager, I caught highs 50 bushel a day. Right now, crab is catching two or three bushel a day. Now I started running charters, fishing charters, because crabbing started declining and, and the fishing was more lucrative money-wise. And educational. His charters are an opportunity to keep stories of the blackjacks alive for generations ahead. Although tradition on these waters is changing, one thing remains the same. Nothing tastes like the Chesapeake Bay Maryland crab. It's got that certain taste to them. And, and it's the only place like that in the world is the Chesapeake Bay Blue Crab. Next, an up and coming Baltimore chef inspired by his family's love of cooking. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels What's the latest The bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Back in Baltimore, a new generation is putting a spin on the crab cake. I'm Alex Perez. I'm the owner of Poppy Cuisine. 
I'm an artist at heart. So uh, cooking, um, the arts of culinary, you know, that's something that I'm very passionate about. Not necessarily having a recipe to go off of and just getting in the kitchen, freestyling and coming up with a masterpiece. It's that freestyling approach that brings people through these doors, clamoring for a taste. Jumbo, crab, crab is king in Baltimore, so um, you're going to see crab cakes, uh, crab cake fries, crab cake egg rolls. Everyone's been going crazy over it as well. This is the ball. So I just come back for that and I enjoy it every time I come here. We actually live in D.C., so we rode all the way up here an hour just to come here. Right now I'm drizzling our warhead and our aioli sauces on it. I have a family from the Dominican Republic. I'm Afro-Latino. I'm black on my mother's side, and pretty much I've um, always had a love for food and uh, cooking food, eating food, so learning how to cook from my, my dad. So my dad taught me how to cook at the age of 10. I grew up, you know, watching my grandmother cook a, a lot as well, so I started pretty much combining the uh, foods that I learned to cook from my grandmother with the foods I learned how to cook from my father. And that's kind of like how the uh, whole poppy cuisine, you know, was, was born in her kitchen, essentially. That was eight years ago. While working a full-time job, Alex began building a new business on the side, catering food out of his grandma's kitchen. In February 2020, he was finally able to open a restaurant. Then, the pandemic hit. Of course, you know, a month later, we get the news that we have to shut down and only do takeout. So that just opened up the, uh, the, the floodgates, essentially. And you have people standing in line hundreds of people <laughs> on the block and in, in that mass, you know, cars double parked up and down the streets. And it was, it was just may, it was mayhem. During a global crisis, the city Alex was born and raised in rallied around him. Now, Poppy Cuisine is packed with locals and tourists alike. But the chef stays true to his roots, running it with close family and friends. My little sister, Natasha. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Hi. Natasha. My big bro, Alex. I can employ family members, friends, and so forth, you know, that are people who I grew up with, people that I'm close to, and it's very rewarding, you know. Coming up, I'm going to grab my apron and join Alex and Grandma Gloria for a lesson in cooking crap. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free. Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. I wanted to meet Alex and his grandma Gloria, the inspiration behind his cooking. So I dropped by their kitchen to say hello. Well, I know I picked up from my grandmother, my mother-in-law, and um, just put my own spin on certain dishes. I didn't follow it to the, the recipe to the letter. Were you able to add a little? Bit? Yeah, but he's always asked me uh, when I fix the dish, well, "What did you put in this? How did you do? How did you do this?" And I would tell him, I said, you don't have to follow to the letter, you know, put your own spin. And Alex has done just that, turning the classic crab cake into an egg roll. Genius! The ingredients, simple. A pound of jumbo lump crab, panko breadcrumbs, aged cheddar cheese, 
egg roll wrappers, and a couple of sauces and microgreens to top it off. There's the star of the show, the crab meat. Put on an apron, I've got rubber gloves on. All right, patient's ready. So how do we get started, Alex? Yeah, so first what you wanna do is say we have some uh, Maryland jumbo lump crab here. Uh -huh. So for the most part, I shouldn't have much shells in, but mm -hmm. uh, typically uh, I like to sift through it. Just gotta see if there's any shells, and if so, you can put the shells right back in this oh. uh, container. There you go. So Gloria, did you know you were ra helping raise a, a culinary genius? <laughs> well, no, but I know he liked to eat. <laughs> <laughs> This sauce particular is our, our crab sauce mix. Okay. So we're gonna drizzle a little bit at a time. I don't wanna put too much, right. just enough to uh, bind. You got enough for Al? Yep, I think I'll have enough. Oh, she stay by me, I like this. I like this lady. This is why I'm so particular uh, about, you know, when I'm doing things in the kitchen. Uh huh. Start actually rolling these things up. Yes. Why? Why? Why do you think this this recipe is, is so popular at the restaurant? The most popular. Um, well, I think uh, because it, it pretty much gives you the ability to uh, take a a bar more favorite and you know make it handheld and on on the go. Uh -huh. You know, throwing your hand. Kind of eat. Food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's one of the, the biggest reasons it's it's very popular. Other than the taste as well. Right, well, exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah, because that's You can take taste. it with you, but if it's not right, tasty, exactly. right, right. Uh, come back for it. Yeah, so what we're going to um, do is uh, we're going to take like a, a pinch of uh, crab. It's around like a yeah, quarter cup or so. Mm -hmm. We're going to sit in the middle. Not too yeah. much? Yeah, we want to take a little bit out, a little pinch out. Actually, we want to put a little bit more in. Yeah. Which is it? <laughs> All right, so that's perfect right there. That's perfect, right, perfect. <laughs> and we're gonna Just literally fold them up envelope style. When, what is it about cooking and family that, that, that is so important? Yeah, I think uh, for me, um, you know, living a, a busy life as a business owner and a dad, a husband, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, food is a uh, opportunity for family to come together, you know, talk about things, especially if you haven't seen each other in a long time. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a way for us to connect, so. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence, is, it, is it true you've never done this before? No, I haven't. It's true. Oh. Could have fooled me that you never did this before. Look at that. <laughs> Bam! Done! Faster than I did. Wow! <laughs> Wow, that natural grandma thing. Love it. So now we're gonna get get the deep fryer up here and fry these bad boys up. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Woo! You had to describe the heart of your cuisine. What is it, and and how does Baltimore uh, kind of part of that? Pretty much my my story, and I think that connects very well to our Baltimore. You know because. You know, I, I grew up here, you know, all my life, and I think everything that um, I faced during the time that, you know, I, I started this company up until now, I've been transparent about, and it resonated very well with the uh, the, uh, the people in Baltimore, and they, they watched my journey through the years, and I feel like that's that's really the, the heart of what mm -hmm. I do. Make sure and the around the edges and everything things like that, so that's why I keep turning them, you know, so it doesn't <laughs> fry on one particular side too much. And, Want to even fry? Mm. Nice and golden. So you want to cut these diagonally. So, yeah. so I'm going to drizzle. This is our aioli sauce, house made, and this is our warhead sauce right here. <laughs> so the sauce is kind of sweet, has a tangy bite to it. Oh, kind of like Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's right. Well, I guess there's only thing, one thing left to do. Yeah, and that's Try the piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crab cake egg roll. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Chef Alex, you have done Baltimore Pride. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our time here in Baltimore is coming to an end. We tried the traditional crab cake. Tasted a modern spin with crab cake egg rolls and even went straight to the source on the Chesapeake Bay. At the center of it all, one thing still ringing true, food tastes better when you eat it with family.
I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post and I know trends. Each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Lovu and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day, January Reset. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Happy New Year, everyone. You know the saying, New Year, New You. Well, it's true. For many, January is about resolutions and resets, and we have you covered. From the latest kicks making their mark all over social media, to must-have elevated everyday items that will add ease to your routine, whether your new goals are in the kitchen or the gym. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Let's start with beauty in the new year. So this bestseller from Kiehl's can help give your under eye a new lease in 2022. This is their creamy avocado eye treatment and all I can say is thank you. It may be small in size, but it sure packs a big hydrating punch. It is just so creamy and so rich. And it's really perfect for this time of year when we're all combating drier skin. And what I love about it is it has ingredients like avocado oil and beta carotene and even shea butter. So there's a lot to love with this little Kiehl's eye treatment. Next, it's winter, and we know the feeling of dry hands. So with giving your nails a little TLC as part of your list of beauty resolutions, this cuticle oil is for you. So it's called the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, and it's actually made with cold-pressed oils and vitamins that is designed to lend and help give intense hydration to your cuticles and your nails, whether they're brittle or cracking or just super dry. But one of my favorite things about this cuticle oil is that you can also use it on your skin. And we're washing our hands all the time these days, so that's really helpful. Now, I am really excited about this next one, which I've personally tried. I mean, talk about an easy skin upgrade for the new year. This is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF 50, and this is a multitasking cult favorite wonder. And it's essentially a tinted moisturizer, or I guess you could call it even a moisturizing foundation. And I've always really been excited about the idea of a tinted moisturizer, but I've never really been able to find one that had the right amount of coverage. So when I tried this little CC Plus cream, I cannot tell you. It was like a eureka moment. It gave me almost instantaneous full coverage, but it felt really, really light. And it didn't look like I was wearing a ton of makeup. Also, it comes in 12 different shades. Okay, New Balance has once again taken the sneaker world by storm with one of the hottest, most talked about sneaker designs of the past two years. Sneaker fans, meet the New Balance 327 and it is seriously stylish. It actually launched on the runways in Paris. And what people are loving so much about this sneaker is its retro style. It's got a total 70s vibe. But what's so cool about it is it's made with high-tech materials. So you're getting that retro vibe and modern day comfort. It's angular, it's got great suede details. I love the sole. It's pretty much a platform and who doesn't like a little lift? And I think one of my favorite things about the 327 is all the great colors. Today we've got this bold orange with the forest green logo, this lavender with the metallic silver, and 
these purple, which really to me look like very Perry, which is the Pantone color of the year for 2022. Now, this next one is something that I hadn't seen before. It's an exciting new take on the puffer, and you're gonna wanna add this to your winter uniform this year. It's from Old Navy, and it's called the Packable Half Zip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket. First of all, it can do a really cool party trick, which I'll show you in a minute. This material is so warm, it's so light, it's not bulky, and I am so jazzed about the silhouette. It's oversized, which we're seeing so much of now. It's got the great drop shoulder and it's long. It really hits at a flattering place on the hip. Plus, it's got the high-low hem longer in the back. So this gives you a little bit more coverage. It looks great with leggings. And it's really versatile. You can easily layer this. Now, let me show you the party trick that I mentioned. See this little pocket here? This entire jacket can fold down and fit into this little pocket. So it's packable. So you can throw it in your bag and go. It's great for travel. It'll fit in your suitcase. This is a really cool jacket. Now, another useful cold weather piece to invest in this new year, the puffer vest. Layer it, live in it, or just love it. You'll wanna wear this versatile down vest from Land's End every chance you get. Talk about an affordable upgrade. I cannot get over the price on this one. And this little vest, has style and substance. Let's talk about these bold colors. They are so on trend. I don't know which one I like best. Plus, these are actually really flattering and they have a couple of cool features. First of all, they're tailored. But secondly, they have this shape enhancing stitching. So see this stitching here? They kind of look like rectangles. That's called baffling. So if you notice on the front, it is a wider baffling. On the side, the stitching and the baffling is more narrow. So it gives this slimming optical illusion. So we talked about the style. Now let's talk about the substance. These babies are made with genuine 600 fill power down. So that means weightless warmth. Yep, three cheers for these little puffer vests. They really do elevate the everyday. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my all-time favorite solutions to looking cool while staying comfy, the sweat set. So let me tell you what I love about the set. So each of these are fantastic in their own right. We've got a crew neck top with a sort of oversized silhouette. It's cropped, it's flattering. We've got the new high-waisted jogger, but when you put these two together, you get an outfit. Suddenly, you've got instant elevation. It looks so stylish. It even almost looks like a jumpsuit. And what I love so much about this is we're still super comfy. We're still wearing sweats, but it kind of doesn't look like it. And these crew necks and joggers are so incredibly soft. They're made out of a French terry, and Gap has even used this great washing technique that makes these feel like they're vintage or well-loved. So when you put them on for the first time, they kind of feel like you're already wearing your favorite pair of sweats. So I'm really loving all the fun fashion-forward colors, and I can't wait to get in my sweat set <laughs> and enjoy 2022. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment, the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF, the New Balance 327 Sneakers, the Old Navy Packable Half Sip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket, the Lands In Puffer Vest, and the Gap Sweat Test. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCohen Logan is talking to trend expert Brittany Levine about her favorite items to stock up on for the new year. And later, Jen Fallick tackles more must-haves, whether your resolutions involve the kitchen or the gym. Don't go away. You'll get one beautiful life to live. 
what are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs>
Okay, let's move on to the next item. One of the things I love to do during the course of the year is get my nails done, but it's expensive to go to the salon and so time consuming and you've got this great solution. So tell me about the Manny Rescue Kit. Yes, okay, so this is from Gloss Lab. They've created their proprietary kits here that really are aimed to just save every issue that you have with your nails. This is a Manny Rescue Kit. So if you have a chip, if you need a little bit extra polish, if you need to smooth something out, they have everything in that kit there for you that just comes in these cute little pouches. So again, something easy to just reset, throw in your bag and go all from Gloss Lab. How adorable is this? Like one of my goals for this year, Britt, is to travel. So I love how small these are. Okay, let's move on to the next item. This wash buffer is so cute, but how does it work? So we're talking about the sponge gel infused buffer yeah. right now. So this is amazing because you see that it comes in this gorgeous flower design, but this gives you a chance to exfoliate, cleanse, and moisturize your body in up to 14 washes. And we're talking about a body reset here because when you really exfoliate your skin, that's when you give your skin the chance to glow. So this is by Sponge Gel, their body-infused wash buffers. They're all available at Anthropology for $16. They're super easy to just hang on to your shower, cleanse your skin, and they come in all of these gorgeous scents. Mako. This is the Freesia Pear, absolutely stunning. It's gonna really create that spa-like experience in your bathroom. And I know not a lot of us are getting out to the spas right now. So if you wanna do that for you, reset at home and give yourself that pampering experience, this is what you need. I love that. And it's like a two and one. So it's such a space saver. It's a time saver. I absolutely love that. Okay, so let's move on to electronics. Everyone can relate to this. You got wires all over the place. I love that this next item can keep you organized. Exactly. I like to keep everything organized. So in order to reset your life in terms of your electronics and all those different cords, this is a case from Ganamoto. You can get it on Amazon, $45.99, and they come in different sizes. All you do is just slip all of your wires in here, basically organize them by area. You can also put your chargers in there as well. So this is something that you can have everything in one place. And then when you are going to look for something, because I'm always losing the cord for the specific item, you know where it is, right? It's in that specific place, it's in that compartment, and then you just zip it up, and you're uh -huh. good to go. So How perfect is that? This is going to be a lifesaver for you and your family if you get one of these. Speaking of lifesavers, it's all about January Reset. We're trying to save you money. And when it comes to groceries, I want to keep my groceries fresher and keep them nice and organized. And I am so obsessed with these meal prep containers. These colors are so cute. Aren't they amazing? So oh. these are the Ello Dura Glass containers. They come by color coding and they're glass. So when your food is stored in glass, it really preserves the food longer. It keeps everything airtight. It's also BPA free. So you just put your food in there for the week, prep it, you're ready to go. Load these in your refrigerator. If you wanna take these on the go with you too, you have the silicone coating that surrounds the glass to keep everything safe stack them up, and you've got your meal prepped for the week. I mean, it's not, it's easier than that, right? That is so clever. If you're starting to go back into the office and you need uh, organizers, meal prep containers, these are so classy. Well, Brent, I feel like I'm ready for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for joining us on our January Reset. I hope you have a great, sparkling 2022. You as well. Thanks so much, Mako. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The pill pouches the Gloss Lab Manny Rescue, the Sponge Gel Box Flower Body Wash Infused Buffers, the Electronics Case, and the Glass Food Storage Meal Prep Containers. Up next, Jen Fallon continues with the January Reset, whether your reset goals are in the kitchen or in the gym. Don't go away. This is what it looks and feels the like. Spell. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world.
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah. I love too. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah. I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. I love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick. Welcome back to Shop All Day, where we're talking all about that January reset. We have must-have products, whether your New Year goals are drinking more water, spending more time in the kitchen, or making more me time. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Upping your daily water intake can be key to reaching your health and fitness goals, which is why so many of us are making the resolution to drink more water in 2022. And this water bottle could help make all the difference. Check this out. So this is a water bottle that has a time marker, but unlike many similar products, this water bottle is actually really sleek looking. You can bring this with you out and about all day long. You could bring it to a work meeting. It fits in the cup holder of your car. It's just like a fashionable, great accessory item that happens to also help you achieve your hydration goals. All you gotta do is stick to the markers, refill at lunchtime, and by the end of the day, you will have downed half a gallon of H2O no problem. There's different colors. I love the metallic tops too. Easy to clean. These are genius. Another great way to stay on point with your health, wellness, and fitness goals is to get into the smoothie lifestyle. I am a huge fan of smoothies because for me, they're so delicious. They're really filling. And with this product, they are so easy to make. This is the blend jet. And all you got to do with this charge it up it's usb rechargeable so every full charge is going to give you 15 smoothies that you can blend up anywhere anytime on demand you throw this in your bag and you literally put in whatever you want to mix in your smoothie i love to put in some berries a little milk maybe a little protein powder if you're in the mood and you don't even need a cup because you can drink right from the top of the jar it's small, but this is a mighty. There's a patented turbojet technology in here that blends some of the toughest foods in 20 seconds flat, according to the brand. Comes in a ton of fun colors too. I love the little turquoise here, the blue. This is such a great gift for a fitness fanatic. Do you have anyone that you wanna gift to this month? But for yourself, this is a must. Now, if getting to the gym is part of your 2022 plan, we have an elevated essential that you need to own. Check out this duffel exercise bag. It can really feel overwhelming to pack up for the gym when you have a full day ahead of you. I love that this has compartments for everything, so it's so much easier to pack efficiently. You've got the spot for your water bottle, there's a spot for your sneakers. You know, there actually is a separate shoe compartment. You can also attach your yoga mat up here. And I love that there's a waterproof compartment in here, so after your workout, you can store your workout where 
in there until you've got a chance to throw it in the laundry. We cannot ignore the fact that this bag is cute. I love the quilting. I love the gold zipper detail. It's got a crossbody strap so you can tote it around hands-free. All the options. Now that we have your fitness hacks handled, let's talk about meal prep. If that was one of your resolutions, we're gonna start with this Herb Saver Pod. I am madly in love with this product. I own three and they are always in my fridge at all times. This preserves your herbs and saves valuable space in your fridge. All you do is you rinse and dry your favorite fresh herbs, can be basil, mint, oregano, dill, and you place them right inside the pod. Then, there's this little spigot on the back. You just add water to the bottom. And these herbs will be good to go for up to three weeks. In addition to herbs, I put asparagus and scallions in these. And you save so much money too because there's less waste. Now that you have a fridge stocked with delicious fresh herbs, enter the herb shears. Check these out. I absolutely love these. The fact that I can literally chop fresh herbs right into a salad or right on top of chicken is huge. You can just snip and savor the most delicious meals. Plus, these are so easy to clean. They come with a little comb that you can basically brush through to get any little bits and pieces out, give it a quick rinse under the faucet, and then throw them right in the dishwasher. It couldn't be easier. Now, planning ahead is the key to changing your life with meal prep, but you need to be ready to store all the staples that you make. And bulky containers can take up way more space than we have to spare, right? Enter these collapsible containers, ready? These are stackable and collapsible silicone containers. They're great to store all kinds of food. You can put your leftovers in here, you can put your chopped up prepped veggies. These have a snap on lid. Snap it on, you know when it's nice and secure. And when not in use, you can collapse them down to one third of their original size, right? So this is what they collapse down, so easy to store. Besides saving space at home, if you're taking a snack to go, once you're done, flatten them out and You've got more room for everything else that you need to bring around with you every day. This next product is another one that we swear by in my house. These reusable lidded bowls have a sturdy lid that has a really secure wrap. So it's easy for all ages from my six-year-olds all the way up to open and then when they're done to reseal. All you gotta do, put the top right on and easy to clip it right around it's leak proof and it's sleek looking. So this is sophisticated enough for me to take with me if I'm going to like a work meeting. This looks like a beautiful high-end bowl, but totally portable. Now, to round out the resolution trifecta, the next thing everyone's thinking about right now is getting a better night of sleep. So first up is a white noise machine. I love this white noise machine because besides drowning out environmental noise, white noise can become part of that bedtime ritual that really helps to cue your brain and your body that it's time to wind down. This machine right here, so little, right? It has 20 sounds to choose from, including ocean, rain, bonfire noises, if traditional white noise isn't your thing. And it has a little timer right here, so if you want it to auto shut off after an hour, you can. Or if you prefer that white noise to last all night long, it'll work that way too. Another thing that's important to note about this, again, is the portability. I find that when I'm on a work trip or if I'm away with my family, having those little reminders of my nighttime routine on a daily basis really helps me to fall asleep. And now that we've set the ambiance with the white noise, the sleep eye mask is the last thing you need to complete the moment. And this one is a gem. Light is super disruptive when you're trying to sleep, both falling asleep and staying asleep. And while you cannot always control the environment around you, with this sleep mask, you can control how it affects your rest. I love the design. Some sleep masks can feel claustrophobic. They really press down on your eyelids but not this one. With this, you've got the little openings here so your eyes can breathe and blink. It's memory foam as well, so it means you're gonna get a custom comfy fit every time and beautiful colors too. It just feels great, it works wonders, it's a no-brainer. Now let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the water bottle with time marker, the blend jet, the exercise duffel bag, the herb saver pod, the herb shears, 
the collapsible containers, the reusable lid and bowl, the white noise machine, and the sleep eye mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on all your better basics and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle. And let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we want to do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't want to develop too much gluten, but we also want to make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. I'm just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour. And we'll just keep mixing our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? <laughs> it's what it feels like, okay. And now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little 
one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough. Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I wanna get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though. I mean, it's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling. It is time to cook our gnocchi and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully and we can use our fingers to plop these in because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy and Dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly add in our parm. Keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice, even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. 
Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. Oh my gosh, you guys. How gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm some freshly ground black pepper. And then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, a little drizzle of olive oil, gives the pasta gorgeous sheen. And there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say, except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. So good. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef. But this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme, and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some Baby Bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo, okay, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry. Mushrooms are kind of like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil. A little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. 
You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up. And look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it. But again, this is a no mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen, the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. If you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I set this over here. Now, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now, there's a lot of chicken flavor here. Ready, so we want that. Oh, we've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. That's a little bit, just to create some steam. And also, this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water, it's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy and that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon. And just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer and you can see right here inside that the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell-o-vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. You like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and then today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh. Look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. This will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now.
you get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> this is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. I grew up on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne a la vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with a crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you wanna start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this, we're gonna add a layer of olive oil and we're also gonna add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy, so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really, we haven't been. 
So get this incorporated into the onions. So, the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out. As well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky, and in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great, look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in, and you can see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil. Right in, and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column, and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli, and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate. This is what it looks and feels with the latest like. Development. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy salted water. So we're actually gonna add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. We want to make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy breadcrumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan.
And then if you want to be extra fancy, you can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious. Good morning, it's Thursday, day three of that unprecedented stalemate on Capitol Hill. Yeah, and there is still no Speaker of the House. It's January 5th, this is today. Chaos and confusion, the messy fight drags on, grinding business in Washington to a halt. We just keep talking, that's all. We talk 